Curtis Warner, but he lost two All-American guards in Sean Farrell and Mike Munchak, along with center Jim Romano. As an end result, they've gone to throwing the football, and it seems to be working very well, even though Joe Paterno is not very, very, I guess at this particular time, comfortable with it. Look at the statistics. Todd Blackledge, in three games, has tossed 12 touchdown passes. That's only three off of the seasonal record for Penn State. Now, last year against Nebraska, he had only four of 13. This is the first big test of the year coming up right here on CBS. Uh, welcome to the Nittany Valley State College, Pennsylvania, the home of Penn State, the eighth ranked team in the country playing host to Nebraska. A record crowd expected today in Beaver Stadium as these two clubs continue their success they hope. Nebraska's won their first two, Penn State unbeaten, a 5-0 combined record, and last week Nebraska was just simply awesome. Look at the figures. They are averaging 510 yards rushing a game, 55 points a game, and here come the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Nebraska losing last year, 30 to 24 in Lincoln to Penn State. And here come now the Penn State Nittany Lions. Well, I'm Gary Bender and we're just glad you can be with us. This is going to be some football game here on CBS. Nebraska, as I mentioned, they lost last year in Lincoln, 30 to 24, and they have circled this date. They've been waiting for this rematch for a long time. They feel that this is the best team that Tom Osborne has had in 10 years. The last time they won a national championship was 1971, and that was under Bob Devaney. This really, in all intents and purposes, is the first chance for these two clubs to establish they are legitimate contenders for the national championship. We'll be back to introduce you to Pat Hayden in just a moment. As our backdrop, as we approach kickoff time, Nebraska, Penn State, the series record thus far, Penn State, five and four. And of course, last week it was Penn State leading in that ball game and winning it 30 to 24. Alongside me, our expert analyst is Pat Hayden. And Pat, we talked about Todd Blackledge at the top of the show, but Nebraska remembers what Kurt Warner did last year. Well, he's had a frustrating start this year, Gary. And if Penn State can't run that power football that we're so used to seeing, expect to see Kurt Warner in different positions, in different formations, in motion, catching screen passes. Any attempt to get him out there in that open field would get one-on-one -on -one in a defender. You said power football. Nebraska can do that because of that offensive line. Well, great offensive football teams control the line of scrimmage. Nebraska has done that in its first two games. And that offensive line charge is led by center Dave Remington, an All-American last year, who some people suggest might be the most dominating offensive lineman since John Hanna. Nebraska has said that Turner Gill may be the best quarterback that they have had in the history of their school. Well, Nebraska has never had a quarterback with as much athletic ability. Some have passed the ball better, some have run the ball better, but Turner Gill can do both with consistency and grace. Turner Gill did not play in this game last year as he was out with an injury. We'll be back to have the kickoff in just a moment. Look at the temperature. Beautiful day, 72 degrees. The relative humidity, 70% as this record crowd. They have been charged up all day long. Bill Parkinson of the Independents will be the referee. It's a mixed crew between the Big Eight and the Independents. As kicking off is going to be Kevin Seibel. Seibel from Vermilion, South Dakota, senior and back deepest Tony Mumford, along with Kevin Bow. The tenth meeting between these two clubs. It's a very, very short kick. And Bell lets it go by him. Back is Tony Mumford, and he's going to be dropped at the seven-yard line. That was not an artistic success, but a very, very effective kick that time by Nebraska. And so Penn State will not get the field position they would like to have on their first series. They'll be marking the ball at the seven, and here is that backfield. Blackledge and Warner, their roommates, very good friends. John Williams has been moved to fullback this year from the running back spot. Garrity, an excellent wide receiver. Up front, Spiros was a starter at tackle a year ago. And Kahn's started at left tackle all last season. From the seven-yard line, the Nittany Lions. Todd Blackledge, he's just been superb in the early going. Kenny Jackson goes in motion. 
Blackley dropped to Kurt Warner, and Warner will advance the ball for a pair of yards to the nine-yard line. Defensively, Nebraska's not sure what they have. They haven't been tested thus far, and one thing that concerns him, Doug Herman is out of there. He hurt a knee this week. As an end result, Rob Stuckey will replace him at the right tackle spot. All Big 8, Tony Felici at the right end. Dan Kroger, along with McWhorter. They have depth as well as ability there, and there is a new secondary. Four regulars graduated from last season. Second down and eight from the nine. Williams, you can see, now going in motion, number 44. This is Kurt Warner. He's hemmed in, and he's got to get a yard, and that's all to the 10-yard line. And Pat Hayden, you suspected they might come out and go to Kurt Warner early. Well, they had to strike for some better balance, Gary. They've relied too much on Todd Blackledge early in the year. He has had a superb first three games, but they have to get some more production out of Kurt Warner this afternoon. Third down. Now, Todd Blackledge, in visiting with him yesterday, said they would come out, would not be able to throw the ball, but now with this field position, you wonder early if he will do that. Third down and seven. Garrity split out. Kenny Jackson also flanked to the bottom of the screen. Blackledge, he crosses him up, but that does not fool Nebraska. John Williams. Williams is hit by Jeff Merrill, number 74, and as he fired up from Huntsville, Alabama. He's one of the big nose guards they've had. Traditionally, Nebraska's had the quick men in the middle. And Joe Paterno not happy about his start offensively. And Tom Osborne, all 10 years, he's had his team ranked in the top 10. Back to kick is going to be Ralph Giacomero. Back deep, Fryer along with Jeff Smith. It's a short kick, and Fryer makes the fair catch. And with good field position is Nebraska. They set it up at the 46 of Penn State, a 36-yard kick that time. Offensively, well, Turner Gill, he makes things happen. Craig Rozier, what a one-two punch. Craig last year was also an eye back. They moved him to fullback, as Penn State did with John Williams. And up front, Remington. Tice, a veteran, a starter. And Delco, also a starter from a year ago. And watch Jamie Williams, the tight end. First down now from the 46, Nebraska. Turner Gill, out to Rozier, and Rozier passes inside the 45 to the 43. Gain of two, maybe three, the ball has been fumbled, I believe. Nope. They have blown it dead. Penn State thought they had the football, but they're going to come back. And the crowd, this partisan Penn State crowd, did not like it. So it's going to be Nebraska's ball, the ball blown dead. Ken Kelly, Gattuso, Ofer starting this game. Actually, outstanding defensive end for Penn State. This has been a linebacker school for so long. Radisic on the left side and back deep. Watch the play of Roger Jackson and Mike Robinson to safety. Second down over the middle. Running the ball to the 35-yard line. Nebraska make it the 36-yard line. Straight up the middle goes Roger Craig, and that's going to bring up third down a yard to go. Dave Pathenroth, the linebacker, making the stop. There is Craig, the leading rusher a year ago for Nebraska. Gary, we expected to see power football for Nebraska. That's exactly what we're seeing here in this opening series offensively. Third down a yard. Wilkening has come in at fullback now for the Cornhuskers. Turner Gill, off to Craig, and I don't know, it's going to be very close. Roger Craig out of Davenport, Iowa. Last year he gained 1,069 yards, but he needed a big yard there, and I don't know. Let's see. They may have to measure. And they're going to bring the chain gang in. That big power offensive line had their work cut out for him on that play. Well, Gary, what makes Nebraska so difficult to defend, as we've talked already a couple of times, they do run the power football. We're talking about between the tackles. But they also, with Turner Gill at quarterback, they can run the option series, and they also can pass effectively with Turner Gill. They really have three separate offenses, and it makes them very, very difficult to defend. Here is that measurement, and they have the first down by what? Maybe the half the length of football? Wait a minute. No, they're indicating... There it is. I thought for a moment he was saying it was short. I thought my eyes had failed me. And it's going to be a first down at the 36 by the half the length of a football. One thing you mentioned, Pat, they'll also cross you up with that wing back once in a while. Fryer, they'll bring him inside on a reverse. People have been frightened of that wing back since Johnny Rogers, I think, and Fryer's in the same mold. Craig welcoming the backs now on a first down for Nebraska from the 36 of Penn State. No score just underway. 
with pitch Craig. Craig powers to the 30-yard line. Interesting that they have Craig now at the eye back, have Rogier out of there, and Wilkin he play. Gattuso making the stop that time for Penn State. You know, Craig had over 100 yards against Penn State last year, and they're hoping he's going to pick up where he left off. But every play so far, Gary, has been between the tackles and letting Dave Remington and company, company do their job up front and control that offensive line of scrimmage. Those statistics you have to remember are against some teams of lesser competition. They have not been tested. This is what this is today, a big test. Second down, five, Craig again, tries to bend it back, and that's going to bring up a third down. Gattuso again, a real competitor for Penn State, making the stop inside the 30-yard line, so it comes to another third down for Nebraska. Jamie Williams will now check in. Mitch Crink, who was in a tight end on that play, comes out of the ball game. We're looking at Roger Craig. The reason Mike Rozier has not been in at tailback so far, he had a little injury there. He's shaking it off now. He's talking with the coaches, and he's going to be in the game a little later on. Well, that's the reason working it in now, and Craig has moved back to the eye back. There's the distance they have left on this third down. Williams moves over to the near side as the tight end, the all-big eight performer. Here's Gill on the option. And Gill is not going to get the first down. The Nittany Lions, led by Ken Kelly, diagnosed that well. Kelly, who's been playing both a defensive end and a linebacker spot, made a fine play. This is the option series to talk about Turner Gill. Watch how slowly it develops. He's reading that in, and watch Walker Lee Ashley put some pressure on him. Mark Robinson come up from the free safety position, Gary, to make the tackle. Mitch Crink now comes back into tight end. Turner Gill had two operations on his leg. He had nerve damage. He was 90% at the start of the year. They think now he's back to full tilt. Fourth down, they're going for it. Fourth and two. He mishandles the ball. Gill, he's trying to add lib, and I don't think he got the first down. He did not. So at a very critical time, a mishandled exchange from Remington to Turner Gill, and Penn State takes over. Remington, when he snaps that ball, and we'll pick this up as the game wears on, almost looks like he's offside all the time. He takes that step. That time, they did not complete the exchange. There's no score here at Beaver Stadium. Two, and here's what happened. Well, before a quarterback can do anything, he's got to get the ball from the center. There you just see a mishandled snap between Remington and Gill, and it's a fourth down. It's a critical play. Sometimes a fourth down, Gary, that center wants to get that ball off and get to his block. Now Penn State has good field position. Remember the first time they had the ball at the 7. Now at the 27, and Blackledge is going to take advantage of the field position. Beautiful protection. Complete to McCloskey, the tight end. Mike McCloskey out of Philadelphia. Rammed out of bounds. That's going to be very close to the first down. McCloskey already had seven catches coming into this game. Watch the protection that Todd Blackledge has here. Now, this offensive line of Penn State is taking some criticism, but Blackledge is able to complete this pass because nobody rushing him. He picks his third receiver, the tight end, McCloskey. McCloskey did get the first down. 6'5", 240. He's known for his pass catching, not the blocker maybe that some of the other tight ends, but you can see he can grab the football and did. First down grab at the 37-yard line. Only set back is Williams in the wing position, Kurt Warner. John Williams, 40, 45. He is struggling and has a first down to the 49-yard line, a 12-yard pickup. Brett Clark, sophomore from Nebraska City, Nebraska. And these Penn State fans, they're used to seeing that kind of running football. That's back to the 16 years of Joe Paterno. And now they may establish a running game. And he got a great block there by Mike McCloskey, the tight end who caught the ball previously. We saw his versatility. The play before McCloskey catches a pass, throws a key block there for John Williams. There's what we're pointing out. Look at the difference. How much more they are throwing the football coming into this game. And Blackledge, play action fake. Good protection again. Lots of time and going to run. And he's down to the 45 of Nebraska. Steve McWhirter from Fairfield, Iowa, up to make the stop for Nebraska. McWhirter was out last year with knee surgery. They're going to mark the ball short of the 45, bringing up second down and still six. The Nebraska defensive coaches are really feel Todd Blackledge as an offensive thrower, a deep ball thrower. They are going to try to lay back and play pass coverage, give him some change of, of uh, looks every now and then, but basically play coverage and not blitzing. Dave Remington in the offensive line talking things over. Blackledge, who wants to be a Rhodes Scholar. He's already a 5 beta Kappa. And he reverse to Warner, and Warner's going nowhere. That time, Nebraska reacted extremely well. 
Coming up on the fly was Dave Ritter, a junior from West Point, Nebraska, and is going to bring up third down and five. Tom Osborne, they saw something. They want to adjust, Pat. It's interesting that you don't see too many head coaches being offensive coordinators. Tom Osborne is, is Nebraska's offensive coordinator and quite an offense they have. He was quite an athlete himself at Hastings Cottage, was a high school athlete of the year one year in Nebraska. Third down, four yards to go inside the 45. Blackledge rolling near side, Kurt Warner. Warner is enough for the first down. Inside the 40 to 38, had he not put his hand down and stayed on his feet, he wouldn't have had that first down. A six yard pickup, first down for the Nittany Lions. Just as we suspected, Kurt Warner was in motion here. A little sprint out by Todd Blackledge. They're gonna get him ball on a screen pass. Now from here, he's on his hole. Great balance, he avoids a tackle there. Look at him put his hand to the ground and just enough to get the first down. Great field presence. From Wyoming, West Virginia, in the southern part of the state. He says when they go down to play West Virginia, they are really on his case. First down, Kurt Warner, a Heisman Trophy candidate coming into this game. In motion to the top of the screen. You can't see him this time as Jackson. Here is Kurt Warner, and Warner advances the ball to the 35-yard line. I think it's so remarkable. Penn State not able to run the ball, but they come to a big game against a fine football team, and they're running the ball like days of old. We're going to look here at Toby Williams, the defensive tackle for Nebraska. Now, somebody gets to his feet, but he gets right back up, steps into the hole, and makes the tackle. The amazing thing about Williams, he's a walk-on, but he runs he runs a 4'8", 40, and bench pitches 350 pounds. And his brother was Jimmy Williams, the All-American, now playing for Detroit. From the 35, second down, seven yards to go. Receivers to the top, Jackson, bottom is Garrity. Blackledge on the play action on second down. Again, all kinds of time. He hits Garrity. Garrity inside the 25 to the 21. First down, 13-yard pickup. Dave Ritter getting back from his deep end spot, made the tackle. And Pat, they are mixing it up. They are really showing diversification. Play action fake. You see people bite there on Kurt Warner. A crossing route, which is a great call versus his own. Garrity beats the zone for another catch and a first down. He has a remarkable strings of catches and first downs. Greg Garrity, last week he moved ahead of his father in career yardage in receiving the football. He told me his father was a better receiver. <laughs> he just said that because he knew his dad would be watching today. <laughs> first down, 10. Jackson in motion to the bottom. Blackledge, 3-3. Three of three. Flag on the play. Blackledge over the middle. Jackson, that's a touchdown. But let's see what the penalty flag's about. bring it back. Illegal motion against Penn State. And I believe Kenny Jackson was the man who was in motion. Of course, the receiver is allowed to move in motion behind the line of scrimmage, but he began to move forward before the snap count. A very costly penalty. That looked like the 13th touchdown of the year for Blackledge. Let's listen. Illegal motion on the offense. First down. And so they'll have to retool now. Very costly penalty, makes it first and 15, but was Jackson open on that? He was at least seven yards behind the defensive secondary. A nice touch by Blackledge. You know, Nebraska has never been scored on in the first quarter. Actually, they haven't been scored on except to the fourth quarter. Nebraska has annihilated the first two teams, and they were concerned. They did not know how good their defense would be, and now they're finding out they have a chore ahead of them. First and 15. That's Williams jumping into the wing spot. Kurt Warner, the running back. Garrity, Jackson split out. First and 15, got to set up the screen. Warner can't get it. He was hung up that time by the onrushing defensive line. That play never did materialize. Had he made that catch, he had some running room. And Warner's caught 10 balls this year. They have not been able to use him well as a, as a rusher, but he is a very good receiver. And it's good coaching when you're doing that. When you can't get the ball, your your home run hitter, the ball in the backfield 30 times, what do you do? You give him the ball in screen passes and short passes. Boy, here's some of the excitement here. This record crowd of 85,000 plus, 450 media certificates handed out for the game. It is noisy down there. Second and 15. Jackson Garrity split out. Blackledge. Play action. Again, protection is there. Breaking down now. He is going to be thrown for a loss. He got rid of it. Falling down. That shows you how strong Blackledge is. Toby Williams was a big man himself at 6'4", 255, was dragging Blackledge down when he got rid of the football. 
There's Williams. He had a liver ailment last year that slowed his progress. The year before, he was the Big 8 Defensive Newcomer of the Year. Third and 15. Tenth play now, this drive, the drive starting from the 28-yard line. Blackledge, whose father now is a coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers, former head coach for Kent State. Third and 15. Two receivers at the bottom this time, Garrity and Jackson, and we may have an offside. Back to throw is Blackledge. This is Garrity. He's got another one inside the 10. He's going to break it in, but I believe Penn State's offside, and that's going to be twice. They've had touchdowns called back. And Joe Paterno must be pulling his hair out now. It looked like the tight end. Mike McCluskey, and that's what it is. Oh, what a way to start a big football game. Mistakes, and that's not characteristic of this man's team. You know, he's the crowd his... now is bothering him? No, I think he's trying to keep his composure, trying to keep his team here together. If he can get just a few yards here now, it's going to be a long way for a first down here, maybe third and 18, 19 yards, Gary. But if he can just get 10 of those back. Illegal he's motion in... on the offense, third down. He's in great field goal position. It, the key here is for Blackledge not to get caught for a sack or turn the ball over. <laughs> That's a migraine headache. I believe that Paterno was really trying to get that crowd to quiet down when he was windmilling his arms. Evidently, they've missed that snap count on two occasions, two penalties, bringing back two touchdowns. It's now third and 20. The ball at the 33. Again, there's Paterno. He's saying, be quiet on that side. He's trying to get the cheerleaders to quiet him down. Boy, this crowd is at an edge right now. That's Jackson. Starting one way, coming back. Blackledge back on third and 20. Williams put pressure on. McCluskey, he's out of bounds. McCluskey had the ball at the 10, but they'll bring it back. It's fourth down. Blackledge is just throwing the ball superbly. Well, you notice, too, that he threw the third different receiver on three successive plays. Here's McCluskey. You can see him make a great catch, but he just can't quite get his feet down inbounds. Got to just have one in, but that time, neither. And this is going to be Massimo Manka, a freshman from Reno, Nevada. A 50-yard attempt. This is his first from this distance. And thus far, he's five of six for the year. Manka has enough leg on it, and it is no good. It is wide of the mark. And so a mistake-riddled Penn State team loses an excellent opportunity to get on the scoreboard. Two touchdowns called back. A missed field goal, and Nebraska comes out of there unscathed. They've got to be very happy about that. Well, Nebraska was concerned about that defensive secondary with good reason. We've seen why. So Nebraska will regroup defensively. They bring the offense on the field. There's no score. 5.51 of the first quarter. <laughs> You are looking at live... Not an upset, Stanford over 13th ranked Ohio State, 23 to 20. Illinois trailing Pittsburgh, Marino against Tony Eason. This game here, no score. Nebraska has a football. Turner Gill, and here comes that power football once again. Roger Craig up the middle. Craig across the 35 to the 37-yard line. That last time, the Penn State had the ball. They had it 14 plays, almost four minutes, and did not get any points. This is Tony Felici, the all-Big 8 defensive end. Felici from Omaha. Looks like he may have taken a blow on the back of the head and on the sideline waiting to come back in. Second down and five. And again, a mix-up on the exchange. It looked like Gill and Remington that time were messed up. As an end result, they come up with the football, but they lose about a yard. Third down. Let's see, Pat, if we can figure out what's happening on this. Well, watch how fast Dave Remington's off. Looked like it was a mishandled snap because Remington missed the snap count. He was off a little too quickly and left the ball there on the ground. Well, you know, he anticipates the count, and that time it backfired on him. Well, maybe this crowd noise is affecting him. Third down now. Five yards to go. Todd Brown split to the bottom. Turner Gill rolling. He's going to keep it. And he's going to advance to the 41. And that looks like a yard short of the first down. That's Scott Radisek out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the linebacker over. They may measure. It may be closer than we originally thought. 
Turner Gill that time, letting his blocking form ahead of him. But, Gary, he still had trouble with that exchange between he and Remington. He was fumbling it as he was rolling out, so there was definitely a problem there. Might some of the, the fact might be a playing on natural grass, Gary, they're having trouble with some of that, that exchange. I don't think that's a problem, but Nebraska plays in artificial services, and perhaps that's part of the problem. And the indication is they are short. It'll be fourth down. Nebraska will have to kick the football. There's a Cornhusker fan. It's a long ways from Lincoln, Nebraska, but we saw a lot of red in the hotel this morning. They love their football. They've had 120 consecutive sellouts in Lincoln, Nebraska. So the measurement indicating a fourth down. Grant Campbell will come in and kick now for Nebraska. On that exchange, let's get back to it for a moment. Remington leaves before, really, the snap count. Now, evidently, he's just even a little quicker today because on two exchanges, he's been out of there, and he's left the ball on the ground. Well, it looks on, that pat on the last one, Gary, that not only did he leave early, there was just a miscommunication. I think he uh, missed the snap count, or Turner Gill missed the snap count, but if they're going to have any sort of balance here and semblance of getting an offensive game plan going, they're going to have to get that corrected. Grant Campbell is averaging 44-3 per punt out of Southfield, Michigan. He'll be kicking from the 23-yard line. He hits it high. Mark Robinson back. He makes the fair catch. And Penn State will have the football at the 16-yard line. A 42-yard kick that time by Grant Campbell. No score, 405 first quarter. There it is. It's official. A record crowd. 85,304, and I might add a noisy crowd. And I'll tell you, CBS is glad to be bringing you NCAA football. This time starting from the 17. Earlier they started from the 7, the last time 28-yard line. This is Kurt Warner. They have Coles in at fullback leading the way. Tom Blackledge is just playing superb football for this team. And yesterday we asked him why he's a better quarterback. Well, I've improved a lot in my consistency. I've really uh, learned to pick up my secondary receivers a lot better. I've learned to utilize my backs in the passing offense a lot better, and I'm just more confident as a quarterback out there. I have a better grasp on what we're doing offensively. I have a better grasp of what I can do physically, uh, and it's just been a situation where I've been able to go out and really just let loose and enjoy football and, and just play with my heart and, and uh, just have fun, and that's that's been the key. Goes off to Kurt Warner, Todd Blackledge. That time on a second down and four, and Nebraska's Toby Williams was standing there waiting on him. It's third down now, five yards to go. Warner now, six carries, 15 yards. Todd Blackledge is a better quarterback, and Pat and I were so impressed in visiting with him. He really has poise, confidence. Well, you hit the nail on the head when you say confidence. So much of playing quarterback is confidence, and he's a confident young man right now. Third and five, there he is. Young man out of North Canton, Ohio. Nebraska jumping around on this third and five. In motion goes Kurt Warner. Blackledge protection, breaking down. He's hit as he delivers. Garrett, he's got it. What a catch. Greg Garrett at the 35-yard line. Neil Harris was on him tight, but he still made the grab. A 13-yard pickup. These receivers, he really picks them out and moves the ball around. He doesn't favor any one guy, and there is Garrity this time with the catch. You know, he's caught 34 balls of the last two years, actually 36 now. 34 of those have been for first downs, Gary. It's a remarkable record. He must know his uh, yard markers. He must be a clutch performer. That's what I would say. From the 35 first down, Garrity has two for 26. And this time, split to the bottom of the screen, and comes Garrity. Jackson to the dot. John Williams is checked back in. This is Williams with the football. Williams to the 40. He'll take it to the 47-yard line. Good second effort on his part. Steve Dan Kroger making the stop for the Huskers. Dan Kroger, an all-Big 8 second-team selection last year. I was talking to Coach Chuck McBride, the defensive coordinator. He said that Dan Kroger has never been in the training room. He sees a throwback to the old days of football. He doesn't know what it's like to go in and be... Administered to. He's out there playing every down. He is number 35 out of Lincoln. Joel Coles now comes back in at fullback. Jackson's put out. Garrett is put out. Blackley, second down. Two. He eludes. Ritter deep to Warner. Warner's got it. 14 yard line. 
Chris Van Norman back, but that's a 43-yard completion. That's what Warner can do. He can catch the ball as well as run with it. Look at the speed here. Now, this is an offensive back down against a defensive back. And watch him adjust on this ball. The ball is a little bit underthrown. He jumps up, squares his shoulders to catch the ball, makes a great catch over Van, Norm, uh, Van Norman, a very versatile athlete. If, he does, if he's not hurting you with the run, he's going to catch up a catch a big pass for you, Gary. He is an excellent receiver. He stayed here all summer long. He and Blackledge worked out together. He's gained about 13 pounds. Blackledge shed 10. And they're both delightful young men. They are, and roommates, as we mentioned earlier. Now we're going to have a timeout called by Penn State. The Nittany Lions at the 148 mark after that 43-yard completion. They want to take a break. Blackledge now 5 of 8 for 85 yards. They are moving. Nebraska backed up now at the 14. There's the time remaining. Earlier, Penn State moved the football, but they came away without any points. A 43-yard completion. Blackledge to Warner. Williams, Coles, and Warner. They have a power backfield in there now. Williams jumping into the wing spot. No score from Fever Stadium. Blackledge play action. Setting it up nicely. Over the middle. Let's watch Gary check that. Kurt Coleman. What's amazing about that, Kirk Pullman was an offensive guard in the spring. Can you believe that? And he caught a touchdown pass. Joe Paterno moves his men around, knows how to take advantage of personnel about as well as anybody I've seen. Manka on the point after. It's seven to nothing. Kirk Pullman from the Pennsylvania area coming up with the catch, his first of the year, going for a touchdown from 14 yards out. This is a terrific call. It looks like power football. They've got three backs in. They go in motion. They fake to Kurt Warner. Everything looks like run. Kirk Bowman just slips behind the defensive backs. He's wide open for the touchdown. Pretty good hands for an offensive tackle. Boy, I guess so. They took all that wrapping off his hands. He can catch the ball. <laughs> Again, Kurt Warner's been so much of their offense. Watch. The linebackers freeze on Kurt Warner there. It gives, again, great protection by Black for Blackledge over the top to Bowman and six points. Nebraska has never been scored on this year in the first quarter. Matt, it looks to me like Nebraska has a lot of adjusting to do. Blackledge receivers are open. They were concerned about, Nebraska was concerned about its pass defense, with, and, and rightfully so. Kurt Warner is, uh, is like stopping inflation. He's pretty tough. It's tough to do that. Well, that was an 83-yard drive and six plays. Blackledge on that drive was three of three for 70 yards, and Blackledge is having the kind of days had the three previous times out. And the amazing thing is Penn State's offensive line has taken so much criticism over the last three weeks because Kurt Warner has not rushed the ball very well, but they're giving him all day long to throw the ball. Nebraska's going to have to change his defensive scheme a little bit, Gary, and put some more pressure on Blackledge. That was the 13th touchdown pass of the year for Blackledge. He's been averaging a four a game. He's had two call back today. That's right. There's the statistics. Breyer, Rozier, back deep for Nebraska. Thus far, it's been all Penn State in this first quarter. 143 to go in it. Booming kick that time by Manka. They're not going to bring that one out. Breyer will go to one knee and out to the 20 on the touchback. And Nebraska... And this record crowd, they have their work cut out. Tomorrow, the NFL Today gives you all you need to know about the NFL player strike, the history of the union, what other union people think, the economic impact. Quarterbacks Ron Jaworski, Kenny Anderson, Richard Todd, and Joe Theismann will join Brent Musburger in the studio along with John Madden, Pat Summerall, Hank Stram, and Roger Staubach. And then it's Super Bowl 16. Another look. It all starts tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern right here on CBS. From the 20-yard line, first down for the Cornhuskers. Two tight ends, Crank and Williams in. Gill pitches to Rogier, and Rogier goes for five. Now, Nebraska may have to make adjustments also offensively. Well, number one, they've never been behind before, so psychologically they're in a different position than they have been this year, so they have to respond to a totally new, uh, to totally new situation. They brought in two tight ends here to try to get some more blocking power and some, and some support for the run. Nebraska has yet to throw the football from the 25-yard line, second down five. Checking in is Ricky Simmons, number seven, the wide receiver spot. Gil to Rozier. Look at the strength of this guy. 
Rogier from Camden, New Jersey, was hit, but he wouldn't go down initially. Greg Gattuso had a ride with him, and it's going to bring up third down and two. And Turner Gill may have to throw now. There's the man that scored the touchdown, Kirk Bowman. <laughs> it's a long ways, folks, from Rob Vincey guard to tight end. Now, this guy made that transition. <laughs> okay. From the 28, third and two. Wilkening now is coming at fullback. Let's see if they'll throw. Turner Gill wants to throw. Man wide open. First down, Fryer. And Fryer across the 45. He fumbled the ball. He fumbled the ball. And I believe Penn State has it. They do. Fryer trying to get additional yardage. Had it stripped. Mark Robinson, the excellent safety for Penn State, has it. Well, Fryer is the receiver here. He's got great athletic skills. And what he's trying to do is catch the ball and then get back inside to make a big play. But it's a cardinal sin. When you're getting tackled and there's people around, you got to tuck the ball away. You see Biondi come up, put a stick on him. Hamilton, number 17, is coming in, try to lend a hand. You see him struggling. Now the ball pops loose. And that was Hamilton. Biondi, though. It was the guy that got the ball loose. Big turnover. Nebraska had the first down, and there is Fryer. That puts the Nebraska defense back on the field in a hurry. Coles is in the backfield, along with Kurt Warner. Kenny Jackson goes in motion. First down from the 43. Blackley, pressure put on by Merrill. He had to throw it before he wanted to, and Jackson was not turned, was not looking for the football. That was very good pressure. Nebraska's Merrill, Jeff Merrill. Honorable mention, all Big 8 performer, and that's what Nebraska's got to do is put pressure on Blackledge. Looking at other scores, you saw the upset earlier, Stanford defeating Ohio State. Oh, North Carolina. Think their offense is rolling? Florida leading Mississippi State. The Gators are growling. They are really going well, and Notre Dame having quite a battle with the Boilermakers. Second down, 10. You see 25 seconds left in this quarter. 7-0, Penn State. Blackledge, pressure put on again. He completes it, and oh, is he annihilated. Dan Kroger came up and really pounded the receiver on that play. It's Kurt Warner. They lose yardage. It'll bring up third down and 12, and all of a sudden now, Nebraska's putting pressure on. Dan Kroger is not your finesse player. Watch this. He's going to come out and read this screen, fight through a blocker, and make the tackle. There was lucky there wasn't a fumble there. A great read by Steve Dan Kroger, the linebacker. And we have come through the first quarter play. Dan Kroger, a high school All-American from Lincoln. He led him in tackles in the Orange Bowl. He led him in tackles for the year. And the 10th leading tackler in Nebraska history, Penn State after 15 minutes has the advantage, 7 to nothing. They have been most impressive throwing them through the eyes of a Nebraska Cornhusker. His helmet, it's got to be a concerned look right now as we start the second quarter. Penn State has the ball at the 45 of Nebraska. Skeeter Nichols now in at a running back spot along with Joel Coles. Blackledge back to throw. Over the middle, Garrity just behind him. He may have had his vision impaired that time by one of the defenders who reached up. Dan Kroger dropping off from the linebacking spot. Here we get a chance to see Greg Garrity. It's a big third and 13 play. He's going to get some double coverage now. He's going to push down the field. He's open over the middle, but Blackledge is getting some pressure. You can't see that here. The ball is a little bit behind him, probably catchable. Ralph Giacomero, number 21, back to kick for Penn State on fourth down. He hit it nose high. They're going to let it hit. That ball is going to go out of bounds at the five, maybe the six-yard line. A 39-yard kick, very strategically placed by Giacomero from Upper Settle, Brook, New Jersey. So the field position, not what Nebraska wants, but they did get the football back. In that first quarter, Penn State dominating, look at this, 7-1 to one in first downs, six of those first downs passing. And they've kept Nebraska's offense, which they were concerned about, off the field by controlling the football. At field position, Rozier, Craig, now back in as a 1-2 punch in the backfield for Nebraska. It is noisy now. Turner Gill, Rozier, he struggles to the 10-yard line. Going to bring up second down and still seven yards to go. This is just it. Nebraska's second and seven. This is what Penn State is doing such a good job of. Nebraska's offense very rarely the past two weeks has been in a second and seven, second and eight situation. Penn State's defense is taking first down away from Nebraska and putting them in positions where they don't feel comfortable. Turner Gill has thrown one pass. He completed it, but the ball was fumbled after the catch. 
Second down and seven from the 10. Rozier, Craig again. Play action. Gill rolling out. Has time, but he overthrew Ricky Simmons out of Greenville, Texas. He overthrew him by a bunch. Other scores. What a big day this is. Pittsburgh now leading Illinois. That's being played in Champaign. Some people think Illinois is the best team in the country. Alabama leading Vanderbilt. Clemson, a game we had last year or last week was Clemson-Boston College on CBS. So it looks like the Tigers offense going. Third and five. Fryer, Brown split out. Nebraska needs a first down. They are backed up. They trail 7-0. Gill rolling again. Open and out of bounds goes Fryer. And that will be enough for the first down. And that was very well executed that time. Tough throw for a right-hander to roll left and throw. Just a simple pass by Irving Fryer pattern. He runs down a simple out pattern. The ball was thrown on time, clearly for the first down. This is what they need just to get their offenses going. And this time he steps out of bounds rather than fight for the extra yardage where he fumbled last time. Fryer, they think he's the best since Johnny Rogers, the Heisman Trophy winner at that position. Nebraska now from the 20-yard line. Our football, they return to Roger Craig and Craig to the 24. Second down and still six. Penn State trying to take that power football away. Any unusual adjustments? Well, J Joe Paterno felt that to stop this power football by Nebraska, their defensive linemen had to come off those awesome blocks by Nebraska's offensive linemen and take it to those backs and offensive runners. Our problem right now is the scoreboard. For some reason, we have 85 minutes and 51 seconds to play in the second quarter, so we'll have to make an adjustment. There it is. I don't believe that's correct. The score is, however, Penn State with a 7 to nothing lead. Nebraska now taking possession of this football to 14-49 mark. As you look now at Dick Anderson, the assistant coach for Penn State. Tom Osborne. Osborne replacing Bob Devaney. This is considered to be his best team. And boy, he's had some excellent teams at Nebraska. But right now, his team is fighting an uphill battle. You get the feeling Penn State's going to throw the ball. It's going to be tough to stop, so Nebraska's got to get their offense going. A lot of people felt that this would be a high-scoring football game. You know, Nebraska has not put any of their skilled people, that's Turner Gill, Mike Rozier, or Fryer, really out in the open field where they can do some damage. They've got to pop somebody through that opening of Penn State's defense. Cletus Fisher in the background. There's the total plays thus far. Only three passing. They've thrown the ball effectively, but just haven't thrown that much. Now look at the difference here. That is a much better balance. In fact, that's the best balance they've had this year. And they've done both successfully. Joe Paterno. We watched their JV's play yesterday, and he went out there and he said, this is great football. He says, we don't have all the television cameras, the big crowd. We're just out here having fun. That's the way football. it should be, he said, yeah. <laughs> the clock now, it's been adjusted. There's 1340 left in the second quarter. It's second down, seven yards to go. Turner Gill played his high school football in Fort Worth. Roger Craig, Rozier in the backfield for the Cornhuskers. This is Rozier, a flag on the play. He's got the corner, and he has a first down, but a penalty flag. Rozier, Rozier that's the first time they've gotten outside. Right the Dan play. Biondi over to make the stop on Rozier. Rozier, the Big 8 offensive newcomer of the year. It's going to go against the Cornhuskers. That's the first Nebraska penalty of the afternoon. Came at a very inopportune time as far as Nebraska is concerned. Simmons comes in. Todd Brown will check out. Brown from Holdridge, Nebraska. Right now, you get the feeling that poise is something that Nebraska's really struggling for. Illegal motion. Offense. Second down. You're playing before this record crowd. You've seen Penn State dominate the first quarter. You don't have the field position. You're looking for a bright spot. Yet, Nebraska has a very old team, a senior team. They really should respond to this kind of situation. Second down, now 10, after the penalty of five yards. Ricky Simmons in, split to the bottom of the screen. Gill's going to roll that way. He's waiting for Simmons to make his cut. He delivers it. First down. Good patience that time by Gill. He waited for Simmons. Simmons was there, and Nebraska has a first down. This is the same route that Irving Fryer would run earlier. It's just a simple out pattern, and there, there's way too much cushion. You don't even see a defensive back. The ball is delivered on time. You cannot stop this pass unless you're willing to come up and support a little faster. Beyond, he's going to have to play a little tighter. Simmons last week caught a pass for 61 yards against New Mexico State. A 16-yard pickup. 
Gill now three of four. First down, Gill on the option. Big hole, and Gill advances almost to the first down. The ball is loose again. And who's got this one? No determination yet. I think the Cornhuskers have recovered the football. They have. Nebraska has it now. They're very close to the first down. They're going to be just short, about a half yard. Here is Walker Lee Ashley, number 37. He's a defensive end. Now, he is a big man, 225 pounds. Watch him chase Turner Gill all the way across the field. He is their co-captain, the senior, the leader on defense, and you see why. He was out last week because of a shoulder injury. Did not play against Rutgers. Nebraska's had four fumbles, lost one. Now they have the ball at the 45, second and a short yard. Gill going to take advantage of it. And he hits the man over the middle. That's Todd Brown, and Brown has a first down, and Gill is now throwing the ball effectively. That's a 27-yard pickup. They had a down to waste there, second and a short yard, and they went for more. This pass is completed because of the great play-action fake and great protection. Look, Turner Gill has all day to throw the ball. Todd Brown comes in, jumps, and makes the catch. Turner Gill, I tell you, this team's not known for throwing, but Gill is throwing the ball effectively right now. He's 4 of 5, 67 yards. First down at the 29 of Penn State. 7 0. Penn State with the lead. Rozier. Rozier cuts it, and he hammers his way to the 27 yard line. And now, for an NCAA Today report, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Gary, this was the comeback of the day. UCLA with the ball. Their quarterback, Tom Ramsey, and the Bruins were down 21 to nothing against Michigan. This touchdown pass will put UCLA ahead 24-21. They go on to win it 31-27. Era and I will have all the details at halftime. Back to you and Pat. UCLA winning in Ann Arbor. What a win that is for Terry Donahue and the UCLA Bruins. Rozier on a second down and seven. And he'll advance to the 21-yard line. Nothing fancy right now. Rozier running strong up the middle. We have 11 minutes, 12 seconds remaining in this first half. This record crowd watching a real struggle between two teams trying to find out if they're legitimate national contenders for that championship. And right now, it's third down two for Nebraska. They trail seven to nothing. Big play. Williams and Crank, two tight ends in. It looked like Nebraska might have moved. They did not kill. He mishandles the ball. Penn State has it. Al Harris, number 88, from Wyoming, Pennsylvania. That's the fifth fumble of the game for Nebraska. The second one they've lost. It looked like, to me, the left side of the line fired off prematurely, but there was no flag. As an end result, Penn State has the football anyway. At the 29 is where they'll have it. We have a timeout. 10.45 to go, second quarter. Penn State by seven. Turnovers are killing Nebraska. Well, Turner Gill, it's a simple option. This is we, actually a play that runs very, very well. He pitches the ball blindly, really changes his mind in mid-throw. It tries to bring it back. And Penn State makes a recovery. And Penn State at the 29-yard line. They lead 7 to nothing. Blackledge, time to throw. Open, Garrity. Garrity struggles to the midfield strike. Greg Garrity, he's not very big. He's 5'10 and a half, 170. The boy, he plays like a huge man. Todd Blackledge has been throwing the ball around the different receivers all day long. And here we're going to see Greg Garrity, another one of their great outside receivers, just beat his zone and spin and almost break a tackle there. That's a 20-yard pickup. Again, you're seeing Blackledge in the pocket with plenty of time to throw. Nebraska is going to have to put more pressure on Blackledge. Blackledge is on target, and he is spreading the ball around. He's throwing to all of his receivers. First down at the 49, Kurt Warner. Warner cuts it to the 45. He's to the 40. Warner to the 35-yard line. 15-yard pickup. Chris Van Norman on the stop. That's the kind of running you expect to see of this Heisman Trophy candidate. Well, here's the Kurt Warner we were so familiar with last year. You see a little pitch. He just lets the traffic go by. Little jitterbug there. He's down into the secondary. This has got to be a big lift for Kurt Warner. He has not had big rushing games the first three games for Penn State. He has 28 carries on 28 yards, I should say, on seven carries from the 35-yard line. First down for the Nittany Lions. Blackledge back. Kenny Jackson, 
Broken up. Fine coverage at time by Alan Lyde. Lyde from Wichita. Over batted that one down, and that's one that they've had covered. They haven't had that many covered. Remember, now, in all fairness to Nebraska, they lost all four of their starters from the secondary. Lyde did start six games last year, but they have a sophomore in Clark, a sophomore in Neil Harris playing back there, and they're running up against one of the nation's best, Todd Blackledge. Mike Knox now has come in at linebacker. Steve McWhorter checks out. Knox the sophomore from Castle Rock, Colorado. Short of the 35, second and 10. Little handoff to Warner. There he goes. He gave him a leg. He took it away. 25, 20, 15 to the 10, 5. He's out of bounds at the four-yard line. Chris Van Norman, touchdown saving tackle. Kurt Warner, did he give a leg to him and take it away on this run? Kurt Warner can hurt you catching the ball, and he can hurt you running the ball. A simple little draw. He dances around, breaks the tackle. You can't see the block by John Williams. There you see John Williams make a block, clearing the way for Kurt Warner to get down the sideline in a big game. Now Williams, unselfish football player, moving to fullback. That's one of the reasons he did, the block like that. In the last two carries now, 46 yards for Kurt Warner. First and goal at the four-yard line. Three backs in, Coles, Williams, and Warner. This is Williams in motion. Blackledge gives to Warner. Warner is going to make it to the two. It'll be second and goal there. So Blackledge looks to the sideline. He'll have another play call. Nebraska playing tough on that play. Kurt Warner... I think is saving a lot of frustrations this afternoon. You probably know the story. He was so upset he did not carry the ball the first two games the way he wanted to. But he's resolved that in his mind. He has really worked it out. He's a team player, and he's getting his day in the sun right now. This is the sixth play of the drive, starting from the 29-yard line. Second and goal from the two. In motion goes Williams. Kurt Warner again. Warner's got the corner. Touchdown. Down rushing to the air. Manka to attempt the point after at the 8.51 mark. Manka's kick right up the middle. It's 14 to nothing. Penn State leading Nebraska. And the Cornhuskers are going to have to regroup. Todd Blackley, Kurt Warner. What a one-two effective punch they have been. This is a great call on the touchdown here by Penn State. It's the same formation that they threw up down by the goal line earlier in the first quarter. This time they give it to Kurt Warner. John Williams makes a great block for him, but Warner turns the corner into the end zone. On that drive, Warner carried the ball four times for 50 yards. 71-yard drive, Penn State by 14. Blue band, they have something to really be excited about this last run in particular. Outstanding teamwork by the offensive backs of Penn State. You're going to see blocks by Coles, number 20, and Williams, number 44, clearing the way for Kurt Warner. These guys can share it with one another. It's very impressive. Great team concept here by the Penn State team. Well, Coles, you know, broke his leg last year. He's battled back. There's Kurt Warner. Oh, he's got to be excited. He has come back to what he's been doing in previous years. 14-0. Manka kicking off. Line drive. Rogier. Hey, they're going to throw the ball to Fryer. Fryer has an alley, and he brings it out across the 20 to the 24. A little wrinkle. A new wrinkle that time by Nebraska. Didn't get all that much yardage. But they were trying to make something happen. There was a saving tackle. Nebraska always has something like this in their game plan. You see Rozier throw the ball back. Here's Irving. He's got a wall set up in front of him. You can't see a saving tackle here. It knocks him out of bounds. Otherwise, he might have scored. Excellent reaction that time by Penn State. Look at him now in the backfield along with Rozier. First down at the 23. That's where they mark it. 14-0 Penn State. Turner Gill rolling. Todd Brown. 
Todd Brown had gone just about to the front end of that first and ten marker. That'll bring it up second and ten. So you can see the complexion of this game has now made Nebraska go to something they do not want to do, and that's throw the football that much. But they've been forced into that posture. Brown comes out. Ricky Simmons comes in. Nebraska having to play catch-up football, an unfamiliar role here in 1982. Rozier welcoming him in the backfield. Here is Rozier. Got a block, but not enough. Out to the 26. Some real hitting going on now. Brad Johnson threw the block. Radisek coming over from the linebacking spot. Oh, Vanderbilt. They throw the ball well, and... And they are coming back in that game. Connecticut leading Yale, 17. Now that's a final, 17-7. Brad Johnson in at center. I wonder if Remington has some problems, or they've just made a change there. Johnson, a senior from Harvard, Nebraska, now snaps the ball to Turner Gill. Third and seven, he dumps it to Rozier. Incomplete, fourth down. Nebraska's got to kick again. The crowd on its feet. The record of Joe Paterno here in Beaver Stadium is 80 and 14. And there's been many teams that have been ambushed, and Tom Osborne right now really with an uphill struggle. Campbell to kick. Last time, 41 yards, 7.58 remaining in this first half. Bow is back deep. He's the deep man. Kenny Jackson, the short man. There they are. Momentary delay as they get a new football in. That's one thing a lot of people don't realize, Pat, that you can choose the football you want to use. You can bring one. The NCAA today at halftime. Brent and Era and also Eddie Robinson is going for his 300th win tonight against Florida A&M. Big rush. Campbell had a bad snap. He gets it underway, and that's not a good kick. Campbell's lucky to get that ball away. Biondi came storming through and almost got a piece of it. And so they record the points here. The lion being tossed into the air. Penn State... 14-0. Statistics on this game. Penn State, 14-0. This drive, boy, they could really get some distance between themselves and the Huskers. They get something here. On the 45. Todd Blackledge to John Williams. Has the corner. To the 50. He fumbles the ball. It went out of bounds, and they got a first down because he fumbled it forward past the front end of that chain, and everything's going well now for Penn State. When it rains, it pours. What about adjustments now? What's Penn State doing offensively that's really got Nebraska on the ropes? Well, Todd Blackledge, first of all, is throwing the ball very well. We expected that, but what the key to Blackledge's success has been the protection that he's received. He's had all day to throw the ball. Nebraska has to find some way to put some more pressure on him. They're still struggling. Sometimes they're blitzing people. Other times they're dropping in coverage. They have to find the right mixture to get to uh, Blackledge. First down from the 45. NCAA football right here on CBS. And Penn State impressive in this first half of play. Blackledge play action on first down. Protection there again. Broken up nicely. Reaching up was Mike Knox. Knox is just sophomore from Castle Rock. He was the only freshman to letter last year for Nebraska. He may be their strongest linebacker, a high school All-American and a two-time state wrestling champion. That he pass a, looked like it was headed for a first down. He made a very nice play, a very nice tip, a heads-up play, because Kurt Warner had snuck behind him for a big reception had he caught it. Second down, 10 from the 45. Nebraska needs to hold. They trail 14-0. This crowd, record crowd, Penn State partisan crowd, loving every moment of it. This time, Joel Cole out of Pittsburgh, a senior, the man we mentioned who had the broken leg. A year ago, he scored on a two-yard touchdown against Nebraska. <laughs> Might be a little warm in there today. It was 72 degrees at kickoff time. This shows you what Penn State has done thus far. Great balance there, Gary. And that's something they haven't had. It's been all passing in the three previous games. Williams, Warner, now in the backfield. Jackson, Garrity split out on third and seven. 
Williams to throw again. John Williams. Williams inside the 40 and somehow stays inbound across the 35. Mike McCluskey, the tight end, threw a fine block on that play. These Penn State backs can hurt you in so many ways with some blocks, with runs. Here you're going to see John Williams make a nice catch and pick up a block by Mike McCloskey. These Penn State backs know where their blockers are. You can see him setting McCloskey up. McCloskey comes in the picture. Williams waits for him, steps into him for a few more yards. That's a first down to the 32. John Williams. Last year he started two games, but Kurt Warner was out with an injury, gained 192 yards in one and 140 in the other. That's the fifth different receiver to catch a ball today for Penn State. And Kurt Warner, nothing going on that play, stacked up. He does get inside the 30, gain a two. Tony Felici made sure that Warner did go no further up the field. Inside the 30, second down. You mentioned that Blackledge has thrown the ball around. We have not heard too much of Kenny Jackson today, number 82 for Penn State. He's their flanker and their leading receiver. I expect to see a little bit more of him this quarter. You can see some red all the way from Lincoln, Nebraska. Is this some panoramic view? College football. Inside the 30, second down and eight. Jackson Garrity split up. 14 to nothing, Penn State with the lead. Jackson in motion. Play action, nice fake. However, Merrill's not fooled. Open is McCluskey, but I believe he's out of bounds. He is. Very nice play call. Nice fake. Set it up, but McCluskey just didn't have enough room. Basket to Mike McCluskey. Out of bounds. You're going to see McCluskey. Nobody's even close to him, but he just can't keep his feet in bounds to catch the ball. I wonder if he did not see where he was. <laughs> Whatever it was, it came back to a third down. But Blackley just really faking well. He must be freezing those linebackers. Well, when your running game is going as well as Penn State is right now, it makes those play action plays so effective, and that's why you saw McCloskey so wide open there. Third down, seven yards to go. There's a ground level shot from the end zone. And that's what Blackley is looking at, that secondary. Third down, protection excellent. And broken up. That looked like Toby Williams. 97 who reached in. Rob Stuckey was also back there playing a place for the injured Doug Herman. There's Williams, a very quiet guy. Doesn't say an awful lot. He just lets his action speak instead of words. And so it's fourth down. 5.43. That was an important stop. A field goal attempt coming up. This will be a 47-yard attempt. Manka. Manka missed a 50-yarder earlier. Came into this game, five of six, now five of seven. Strang to hold. Manka didn't get it up that high, and it's no good. Nebraska still very much alive in this football game. That could have been a big drive had Penn State gotten on the scoreboard. Nebraska twice now has forced Penn State to miss two field goals. We'll be back in a moment the time left in the first half. The NCAA today at halftime. Joe Paterno's team with that 14-0 lead. The Big Red Machine not rolling yet. They have 58 yards rushing after averaging 510 a game. Roger Craig. Craig out to the 33. Roger An offensive Craig, line has their work cut out for him, but Penn State has, through the years, played that hard-nosed football. In fact, we were talking about this start of the game, Pat. They don't come out in fancy uniforms. They just come out, put that headgear on, and they make you work for everything you get. Well, there were some question marks in Penn State's defense, too, but they've responded to the call. Rozier, Wilkening in the backfield, second down and seven. Nebraska, ranked number two in the country. Turner Keel back, broken up inside. Intended for Jamie Williams, but one of the linemen got a hand on the ball. Jamie Williams, the tight end. They're looking at Radisek out of Pittsburgh. They think this man's just an excellent athlete, and they think he'll be as good a linebacker athletically as they've had. He just hasn't put it all together yet. He's a great pass defender. I think he got a hand on Turner Gill's pass there. Third down, seven. Turner Gill wants to throw again. They pick up the man blitzing up the middle flyer, the intended receiver. He couldn't clear. It was all congested in the interior, and as an end result, it's fourth down. You're going to see great coverage here by Penn State's defensive backs. It's man-on-man -man coverage. Roger Jackson is running with Fryer all the way across the field. You see him stepping the ball. The ball is a little overthrown by Turner Gill. 
pick the ball will be Grant Campbell. Did you see Remington pick up Ashley? Ashley came in from that defensive end spot, and he picked him up. Campbell to kick. Last time, almost had it blocked. This time, he hits it very well. Bow is back at the 23 for Penn State. Bow out to the 30-yard line to the 31. Penn State with 4.45 to go in the first half. A nine-yard return, a 45-yard kick that time by Grant Campbell. Tonight on CBS, don't miss Walt Disney, followed by Detective Peter Sellers in the Revenge of the Pink Panther. It's a night of great moments tonight, right here on CBS. Gary Bender, Pat Hayden, and NCAA football on CBS. From the 31, first down. Starting to get a little darker here. There was a forecast of possible rain before this game is over. Skeeter Nichols. John Williams in the backfield. This is Nichols. Nichols, sophomore from Cambridge, Maryland. Brings it out to the 33. Jeff Merrill with the stop. Time and time again today, Penn State looks like they're hemmed in. Their backs have struggled forward for two, three, four big yards. There was a good example of it. Skeeter Nichols had a brilliant spring. In fact, may have had the best spring of any of the running backs. There's Stein Cooler, offensive guard for Nebraska. Brown, Nebraska right now trailing 14-0. Second down, seven. Open, Garrity! Greg Garrity, he had to stretch all of that five foot, ten and a half inch frame to make the catch, a 21 yard gain. He's shaken up on the play. He was vulnerable because he was so extended catching this football. Brett Clark up to make the stop. Nice poise by Todd Blackledge here. This is actually his third receiver. You can't see it, but he was looking to other, uh, the other side of the field. Comes back to Garrity, who makes a diving catch. He is four of 68. Courageous little guy from Bradford Woods, Pennsylvania. He's shown a real knack, Garrity has, of finding the, an open area between the zones, Gary. They are trying to double cover him, but he's getting behind the front part of the zone and in front of the safeties and, and catching balls there for first downs. We mentioned his father, an outstanding performer. You know, Garrity at one time thought he was too small to play. He went to a small school, Westminster. All of a Ability to play major college football, and he's proven it, isn't he? Well, he's a walk-on here. First downs, Penn State now with 12. Nebraska with five. Coles, Nichols in the backfield. Blackledge to throw. And Nichols can't come up with it. Good defensive play that time. That was Wade Priner out of Battle Creek, Nebraska, who reached in and got a hand on it. We have Tony Felici shaking up. He wants to come out. And he will, as coming LB Dave Ritter. Felici, 46, shaking up on that play. Second down, 10. There he is. They can't have him out of there. This guy, all big eight. Last year, led him in tackles for loss and was a leading tackler coming into this game. 3.45 to go, first half. Getting the ball placed. Mark Battaglia. The center, McGinnis, Spiros, the guards, Heller, and Kahn's. The tackles. Now, momentary delay as they have the ball spotted at the 46. At halftime, Brandon Era looking forward to scores and highlights. We've had some upsets today, and Eddie Robinson, in their own words, what a class gentleman he is, the coach at Grambling. Second and ten. Open, McCluskey, wide open. McCluskey inside the 25 to the 21. The obvious question is, Pat, how can he be that wide open? A 25-yard pickup on the play. It looked like Blackledge audible. What happened there, they were trying to double cover the outside receivers. You see Blackledge calling audible, the play action fake. Now, they're, when you double cover the outside receivers, what do you do? You go to the tight end down the middle. This is exactly what they did. McCluskey was wide open down the middle for a big play. Tell you, for a guy who didn't want to throw the football, Joe Paterno, <laughs> he's constructed a pretty good passing game, hasn't he? And he's concerned this man, Tom Osborne. Coles, Warner in the backfield. This Penn State offensive attack has been impressive. Kurt Warner. Warner has the 20-yard line to the 17. It'll bring up second down. You know, it's one thing to say you're going to throw the football. Sometimes that can be a pipe dream. you got to know how to throw the football. And evidently... Joe Paterno's been hiding that fact for 16 years. Well, 
one of the great signs of a coach is the ability to, to adjust, Gary. And they've got the terrific skilled people here, the receivers. They have three or four great outside receivers, a nice tight end, and the, the thrower and Todd Blackledge. And they're going to take advantage of those skilled people. And they've, they've done that all season. They continue to do that today. Jeff Merrill is shaken up. He was out most of the spring with some minor injuries. And now coming off, you can see how physical this game has been. We had Felici earlier, now Merrill. And, of course, Garrity, he came off on his own. Second down, seven. Boy, this crowd at a fever pitch. 14-0, Penn State. Ken Graber has come in from Minneapolis, Minnesota, sophomore, to replace Merrill. Blackley, John, second down to John Williams. Williams trying to turn the corner, stays up somehow to the 16-yard line. He ran right through Neil Harris. Dam Kroger eventually made the tackle for Nebraska. And that's going to bring up third down, still a long four. So we have 2.13 the clock running. Penn State dominating this first half. They've had chances at two field goals that did not find the mark. Penn State coming in here, great balance. Tom Osborne, his team, has been backed up all first half long. Seventh play in this possession, starting from the 31-yard line. From third down and four, Warner broken up, almost intercepted. Good coverage that time. Flying over there was Jim Murphy from Lexington, Nebraska. Also, the man who we were talking about earlier that we thought was going to be out for a while, Felici, was over there. So evidently that arm injury didn't detain him that long from coming into the game. Great job by Felici. He was not fooled. They were trying to get Kurt Warner isolated on Felici down the sideline, but Felici falls back in coverage. He makes a pretty good play here. You can see him come up. He almost had the interception. He had hurt that arm a little earlier. That might have prevented him from intercepting. Third field goal attempt of the day. This is a 33-yarder by Manka. This kick is a knuckleball, and he's missed three. The freshman from Reno, Nevada. Shaken up on that play was Lighty, who came in trying to block the field goal attempt. Lighty down at the 23-yard line. So Manka has had field goals in this game of 50, 47, and now 33 yards. Not find the mark. You're going to look at Alan Lighty, a defensive back. You're going to come flying in and trying to block this ball. And he's down. It he looks like he hurt his knee. And Look there's reaction <laughs> from Mank. You think he's happy about things? Looks like after I missed a putt somewhere. You know, we're looking at Lighty come off the field, Gary. This is a man that really Nebraska cannot afford to lose. He's their best defensive back, plays corner for them. And with their de defensive secondary the way it's playing right now, this is a very critical injury to the Nebraska defense. Out of South High School in Wichita, he's a transfer from Texas Southern. The state wrestling champion, believe it or not. You wouldn't think the defensive back would wrestle, but he has. So Nebraska still very much in this ball game. Rozier, Wokening in the backfield, 1.45 to go until halftime. Turner Gill back. Todd Brown, and Brown has a first down catch out to the 40. Gill that time with a 20-yard completion. Deandi over to make the tackle. 5 of 10 for Turner Gill. This gives you an idea how they've been backed up. The longest drive, nine plays. And that was that fumble. What a big turnover that was in this game at this stage. Joe Paterno talking a little defense now. First down from the 40. Gill to Ricky Simmons. First down catch. He took a pretty good shot, but he held on. Simmons, who was a high school teammate of the backup quarterback at Nebraska, Nate Mason. There's the time as they stop the clock on the first down, moving the ball to the 49. First down, Nebraska. Browns put to the bottom. Nebraska moving the ball effectively now. Remington back in its center. Turner Gill throws to Brown. Did he juggle it? He did. He did not have possession before he went out of bounds. But Gill is throwing some arrows. He's really throwing the ball effectively. He really is impressing me. He's putting in a lot of steam in that ball. That's probably why Brown had a little trouble catching that ball. You don't expect Nebraska to throw like they're having to throw, but they've been forced in. 
Todd Brown's either concerned about keeping his feet in bounds or that ball just got a little too much steam on it. Either or, it's an incomplete pass. Well, that was close, though. You see that? He got that foot down, but evidently did not have control. Gill back. That ball is a little wide of the mark. He had to throw it before he wanted to. Simmons made his cut. The ball was just a little bit wide of the mark. But pressure put on that time by Penn State. That'll come to a third down, 10. One left, one minute and 11 seconds left in this first half, Gary, and Nebraska's got good field position in three timeouts. It's important for them on a third and 10 to get a first down here, keep something going in the line. At least get a crack at a field goal, maybe. From the 48 and a half for Penn State, third down, 10. Bill over the middle, Friars got it inside the 30 to the 29, and that now gives them at least a shot at a field goal. Mark Robinson, line over, a 19-yard pickup on the play. Remember now, Nebraska hasn't tried a field goal this year. They haven't had to. Unlike Todd Blackledge, Turner Gill has been under duress all afternoon. You can see people and bodies all around him. He delivers the ball on a shot again to Irving Fryer, who steps in in front of Mark Robinson to make the catch. They have all three timeouts left, less than a minute to go. Turner Gill going to the airways again. And effectively, Jamie Williams can't hang on. Williams out of Central High School in Davenport, Iowa. Last year, all Big 8 with 22 catches. They go back to the drawing board now. Tom Osborne wants a timeout. So with 46 seconds left in the first half, Nebraska expends its first timeout of this game. Turner Gill will come to the sideline. Turner Gill heavily recruited out of Fort Worth, Texas, all Big 8. He led them to six straight wins last year, then went out with injury, and they did not have him in the Orange Bowl. Coming up at halftime, a man who won a few ball games in his career at Northwestern and Notre Dame, Eric Parsegian, along with Brent Musburger, and also, in their own words, a new feature this year that we've had the galloping ghost, and this time, Eddie Robinson. A big moment for the Grambling Tigers, as tonight, Eddie could win his 300th game. Gary, I've known a lot of people who have come out from Grambling and played with some of those players, and they all speak so very highly of Eddie Robinson. I think they feel like they've been better men for having played for Eddie Robinson. A few guys in the NFL that have done very well coming out of his coaching. Turner Gill with two timeouts left, second down 10 from the 30-yard line. Crowd now having a shouting contest from one side of this magnificent stadium to the other. 117 yards for Gill. Rozier, Wilkening, now in the backfield. Todd Brown's put to the bottom. 46 seconds left in this first half. Turner Gill back, look out. He's under pressure, got it off to Fryer. Fryer breaks it, he's going to take it in, touchdown. What a courageous throw by Turner Gill. He was plastered. He never saw who hit him. He's getting up, he has his helmet off, and he's checking to see if all of his parts are still with him. As Fryer just made a fine move to get in for that touchdown. He broke the tackles of Robinson and Jackson. That's something that Joe Paterno was concerned about earlier. They had a lot of open field tackling, not getting done. There was an example of it. Well, that was good offense by Irving Fryer. He did break those tackles. Mark Robinson didn't really miss him. Irving Fryer was just a little bit better that time. And that puts Nebraska right back in the picture. Kevin Seibel, point after attempt on the way. 14-7. That drive. 80 yards in seven plays, and Pat, it was done the way you wouldn't expect a Nebraska team to do it. Finesse and throwing the ball. Watch the courage of Turner Gill. He knows he's going to get hit. He unloads the ball. He really gets kissed there. Finds a way to get the ball to Irving Fryer. Now watch Fryer give us a little effort. Runs over two Penn State defenders into the end zone. Two outstanding individual efforts by the Nebraska Cornhuskers. I think you're right. Fryer just wasn't going to give up. I think he still remembers that fumble early in the game, which hurt him. There's Gill. He may have taken a shot to the chin. Boy, he got plastered. They hurt a lot more when you don't throw touchdowns now. <laughs> Let's look at it again. Now, watch the crossing pattern this time of the tight end. Number 80, 80 is Jamie Williams. Now, he's the guy who's going to clear it out. You see him go up the sideline, and then Irving Fryer ships right underneath him. <laughs> he tripped over Fryer, didn't he? But see, there's, there's some shoddy tackling there. Perhaps they should have tackled him there on the 15-yard line. 
let's give credit to Fryer. Let's be positive. I think it was a great effort. <laughs> That's true. This is college football. Four, At its best. 14-7. 38 seconds. Nebraska, all 80 yards on their drive through the airways. And if you wondered whether Turner Gill can throw the football, I think you know he can. Boy, what a change this is as we come to the last seconds of this half. Seibel kicking off. Bow and Mumford back deep for Penn State. This is going to be Bow. Bow from the five. 15. Bow at the 17-yard line. Well, this crowd all of a sudden, Pat, has gotten very quiet. And those three missed field goals really going to loom importantly, I think, in the second half. Penn State has really driven the ball every time they've had the ball. And they've scored two touchdowns, the opportunity, and three other field goal attempts. But those things may hurt them later on in the ballgame. Well, Paterno had them where he wanted them, but all of a sudden, they may have escaped. Nebraska's right back in the ballgame. Those three missed field goals loom very large. And now from the 17-yard line, Let's see if Blackley just grinds out the remaining seconds. That's what he's going to do. So, this struggle between two teams with unbelievable traditions. You talk about football traditions. You have the USC's and Notre Dame's, but these two teams do not take a backseat to anyone. Penn State, Nebraska, seven points separating them as we wind down to halftime. It's been a remarkable day in football. We'll be updating some of the scores and highlights at halftime. We gave you some of the upsets. What a year this is, as we have a lot of those fifth-year seniors that are having some big years. And so the first half has come to a close. So our score at halftime, 14-7. Penn State, who led 14 to nothing at one stage, letting Nebraska off the hook. And Nebraska moving 80 yards in the air to score. And let's take a look now at the scoring. Bowman, the tight end, 14-yard touchdown pass. Kurt Warner, his first rushing touchdown of the year from two yards out. And that 30-yard pass completion from Turner Gill to Irving Fryer. We'll be back with halftime activities after a message about an upcoming show on CBS. Second half ready to go. You can see it's four degrees cooler than we started this game. Relative humidity the same. It's a little darker, however. Clouds starting to form as we should have quite a second half. Penn State with a 14-7 lead as we start the third quarter. Manka will be kicking off. Back deep, Fryer, along with Rogier. The crowd on its feet. Manka, and we're underway. Second half, he powers one. Fryer back deep, and he won't bring that one out. The touch back to the 20-yard line. Looking at this first half, Pat, I'm surprised how even the statistics are. Early, it was Penn State, but you see total yardage, not that much difference. Well, the statistics don't reflect, Gary, is the times that Penn State has missed the three field goals. They had a touchdown pass called back. Penn State really could have put this game away in the f first half. They did not do so. Penn State, you can see time and possession led there. The two turnovers very costly to Nebraska. Rozier, Wilkening, the two running backs from the 20-yard line. Turner Gill gives off to Wilkening, the fullback. No gain on that play. Let's check now the starting 11s as we begin this third quarter of play. Nebraska, Gill, who had a very fine first half. Rozier and Craig were shut down. They had a tough time running the ball. Fryer, that remarkable 30-yard touchdown catch. Williams, he had one catch that he couldn't hang on to. They've been alternating at center. Remington along with Brad Johnson. Gill in the first half was 8 of 16, 147 yards. Back to throw on second down. Intended for Simmons, defending Biondi. Biondi's been all over the place. Not a very big guy. 5'8", 170 out of Pittsburgh. Defensively, Kelly, Gattuso, Ofer, who has been battling for that starting job with Hines. Ashley put some pressure on in that first half. Radisek, Harris, they may have to play a lot of pass defense away. Gill's throwing. Biondi, we just mentioned. Robinson, at one tackle, he couldn't hang on. The Friar scored on Williams and Crank, two tight ends on third down and nine. 
Gill pumping. He's going to try to keep it now, and he gets it off in the last moment to Roger. Roger breaks out across the 35. He's to the 40, and that's just good athletic ability. Great poise on the part of Turner Gill. A loss turned into a 17-yard gain. A spectacular play here by Turner Gill. He's looking to pass first. Now he's coming down to run the option. He steps inside. He's about to get tackled. He finds a way to get the ball to Rozier, who makes a play. That looks like Sandlot football. Looks really like was, really was remarkable. See Rozier right there. Bruhan coming up to make the stop on the play. First down now for Nebraska. Operating from the 37-yard line. Gill back to throw. Time is there. Going to the far side. Simmons. He was out of bounds. Ricky Simmons. He did not particularly agree with that, but it's going to come back anyway. Beyondi over defending. And Turner Gill throwing with confidence. The ability to just, Simmons had caught an out pattern just a few moments earlier. This time he runs an out and up, but beyond he's there to respond. The ball's right over his head. He just can't come down inbounds. One foot on the chalk line. Well, we've been told that Nebraska's offense hinges on Turner Gill. I don't think a lot of people realize how well he throws the ball, but now he's moving them. Rushing plays, passing plays, then look how it changed in the second quarter. Isn't that something? Gill, an end around, reverse, Fryer, Fryer to the 45, 50, open field, 40, he may go, 20, he's dropped to the 19-yard line, Biondi was the man that stopped him. He came from the far side of the field, Robinson also there, a 45-yard gain on the play, it's a first down at the 18. We've got a new game here. Let's give Tom Osborne some credit. The ability to adjust, like we said, he went into halftime. The power of football was going nowhere, so now they're going to finesse him. Here's Irving Fryer on a reverse. He finds his wall, gets a nice downfield block there by Todd Brown, cuts in and makes a big play, a saving tackle by Dan Biondi, number 39. Boy, Fryer's made two big plays in this game. First down, Turner Gill back. Time, lots of time. Going to the corner, Todd Brown overthrown. Biondi there. Biondi has figured on every play thus far defensively for Penn State. He can play all the positions. Remarkable athlete, not big, but a great heart. That's what the coaches have said about him. Second down, 10. Gill has come out, shown the poise that maybe they did not have when they started this football game. Fryer has four catches for 72 yards and one rush for 45 yards. At wingback reverse, getting the 45 yards. Shane Swanson now into the wingback spot. Give to Wilkening, and Wilkening got a yard, and that's all. The blue shirts were there. In the trenches, Penn State has been tough every year, and there's just another example. Dave Olfer from Elizabeth, Pennsylvania. Last year, played so well in that upset win over USC in the Fiesta Bowl. This drive starting at the 20. No gain on that last play. Third down coming up. Ten yards to go, and there's where they want to be, the end zone. Third down, 10. Gill with time. Now he's in trouble. Gets it off to Rogier, and he has dropped the ball. Let's see. I think it's incomplete. It will be. What happened was Walker Lee Ashley came through and Gill couldn't see anybody. He was stormed under and that precipitated all the difficulty. Walker Lee Ashley has been in Nebraska's backfield all afternoon. You're going to see him here again. He's, he's to Gill's back now. You can see Ashley fight off a block. He comes in, he puts some pressure on him. He's in his face. Gill does a nice job of getting rid of the ball. This will be a 35-yard field goal attempt. Remember, this is the first attempt of the year for Nebraska. Kevin Seibel to kick it. Turner Gill, the whole bad snap. He's in trouble. Gill, he's not going to get the first down. Boy, the field goal kicking teams have really had a difficult time. Penn State missed three. Nebraska didn't even get a crack at it. They gained a yard on that play, and the ball turns over at the 17. This is what happens when you don't get much practice. They won 58-0 last, last week, and they had not much, had much practice kicking field goals. A poor snap. Turner Gill tries to make the best of it by getting to the outside, but the Penn State defense responds. Did they? They had a wave of tacklers at the 17. I would imagine this week both teams might work on their field goal kicking. I think that might be on the quarter of the day. 12.30 to go now. Third quarter. From the 17, Coles. Warner in the backfield. This is Warner. Warner out to the 25. Oh, what a run. He just glides. And to the 25, he's two yards short of the first down. He has 78 yards on the day. 
There is Warner and his company in that backfield. Blackledge, Williams, Garrity, Jackson. Jackson hasn't really been on the receiving end that much. McCluskey made a big catch earlier. And up front, they are protecting Blackledge so very effectively, and Warner has been shaken up on the play. Warner's had a lot of problems with his legs, hamstrings. He went out for the track team this year, trying to develop those legs and run and learn the science of running. We'll be back. Timeout, 14-7 Penn State. Called the franchise by some people. He's off the field, looked like cramps. He'll be ready to get back in. That's good news. Second down, two yards to go for Penn State. 12-15 to go, third quarter. The Nittany Lions with a 14-7 lead, almost missed that handoff. Penn State got the first down. Jeff Merrill in on the tackle. The Nittany Lions looks like they have it. Let's set defensively. Priner has been alternating up front with Bill Weber. Toby Williams. Merrill played strong football in that first half. Stuck in again in place of Doug Herman, who's hurt. Dan Kroger. Boy, he made a pop in that first half. Lyday. Let's check in to be sure he's in there. He was hurt, as you might recall, early, or I should say late in the first half when he tried to block the field goal attempt. He is in there. He is in there at left cornerback. So, as you saw it, is the way it is. It's first down now for Penn State. Cole, Skeeter Nichols now into the backfield. Blackledge back. Protection breaking down. Hits Cole. Flag on the play. Cole to the 36-yard line. Blackledge took a pretty good shot that time. As up the middle came some pressure. But then the penalty flag thrown at the 40-yard line. And it looks as though Penn State's going to back up. Let's see little repair going on. Some of that hitting might jar some things loose, huh? That's Spiros, one of the tri-captains. may be going against Nebraska, holding against the Huskers. Spiros along with Walker Lee Ashley. Ken Kelly, the three men. The tri-captains for Penn State. Penn State has such depth in their backfield position. We've seen Joel Coles and Skeeter Nichols come in and... Defense, first down. They play very, very well when Kurt Warner's been out. They've out. These young men, they have great depth in their backfield position. You know, with the clouds getting here, getting darker, we have mobile lighting, Moscow's lighting, and you're going to see a lot of that. That's the future. College football games in the evening when it gets dark, and it's beautiful the way the lighting has worked here. First down, off to John Williams. Williams to the 45, and this hard-nosed player is into the Nebraska end of the field with the 48. Brett Clark made the stop. You wonder how anybody stopped Penn State rushing in the first three games because they are running the ball effectively. Williams now with 46 yards on six carries. Somerville, New Jersey. It's like a happy young man. Last week, he became the 17th Lion to rush for over 1,000 yards in his career. From the 49, first down for the Nittany Lions. Jackson, Garrity split out. 11 minutes to go, third quarter. Blackledge off to Coles. Coles to the 40. And very close to the first down at the 39. Brett Clark making the stop. There's nothing fancy about what they're doing right now. They're pitching. The linemen are blocking, and they're gobbling up some ground. Well, here's a look at Kenny Jackson, their fine flanker blocking. Now, receivers have to do more to be able to catch the ball. He gets right down on Lyday's feet there and makes a key block. The Penn State defenders, Penn State offensive receivers, I should say, Gary, block better than anybody I've ever seen. They're real team-oriented type of players. They're not afraid to go over the middle and catch the ball, make a big block. And those blocks by the outside people can turn five and ten-yard gains into touchdowns. Okay, Kenny Jackson was a quarterback in high school. I didn't know quarterbacks could learn to block like that, but you kept pointing that out all week on film. These guys know how to block. They don't just go out there and go through the motions. First down at the 39. The measurement had to be taken. Blackledge back to throw. McCluskey the big tight end. Big move, 25. McCluskey to the 20. And Lyde is shaken up again. Looks like he may have a cramp. McCluskey made a big play out of that. It didn't look like it would go that far. It went 18 yards. He has three catches, 53. Lyde, he got a lot of muscle cramp problems in this game. 
Mike McCluskey, they're tight end. You're going to see Blackledge come down. He's going to hit McCluskey. Watch McCluskey after he catches the ball. Gives him a little bit of shake. Pulls up. Let's the defender slip by. And goes downfield for another 10, 15 yards. He shared that tight end spot last year with Vito Cab, who made the Philadelphia roster. He caught 20 passes a year ago. And the way he's going this year, he already has half of that. 10, 3 today, 7 coming into this game. And in this possession, five plays by Penn State and five first downs. You don't think that is an effective offense? Here from the end zone, Penn State fan signaling number one. That verdict still up for grabs. First down now from the 20-yard line. Blackledge moving the team, five plays, five first downs. Kirk Bowman now in a tight end. Skeeter Nichols. And Skeeter doing a pretty good job of getting anything out of that play. Inside the 20, possibly to the 17-yard line. It'll be interesting to see what Penn State does in here if they don't get a first down, whether they'll elect to go for a field goal on, on fourth down. They've had so little success kicking the ball. One thing you should keep in mind, Pat, is last year in that 30-24 to 24 game, Penn State had five field goals kicked by Brian Franco. So that phase of the game has deserted him today and may haunt him yet. Five field goals in that win. Warner in the backfield now has returned. Back to throw, Blackledge on second down and eight over the middle. And it is caught for the touchdown. Kenny Jackson. Jackson, his first catch of the day, and it goes for six points. Second touchdown pass of the day for Todd Blackledge at the 9.42 mark. Manka, who's been beleaguered today, attempting this point after. He has this one. 21-7. That is very impressive football by the Nittany Lions. Archie moving that football 83 yards. Seven big play. Big play football. Here's Kenny Jackson, a very exciting receiver. It's a crossing route. You can't see Garrity. He's going to come underneath here. But Jackson just cuts it down right at the goal line. Blacklist drills this ball in front of the defender. And watch Kenny Jackson defend the ball by turning his shoulders in two yards deep in the end zone for the touchdown. Dave Burke, a sophomore from Layton, Utah, almost got a hand on it as you look at Kenny Jackson. That's his brother Roger Jackson who plays in the defensive secondary. But that was so close to being broken up. But concentration, look at it again. Good offensive strategy by Penn State because Dave Burke is their second team defensive back. Remember, Alan Lighty went out with some muscle cramps before. They went right to work on number 33, Dave Burke. Although he hasn't well covered, Kenny Jackson makes the catch for the touchdown. They think that Kenny Jackson may be the best in the country. And that was just a very fine grab. The junior from South River, New Jersey. He had 19 catches last year for six touchdowns, which tied a school record. That's his 15th touchdown catch of his career, which is a Penn State record. I thought Blackledge was going to throw that ball to Garrity. Garrity was wide open on the other side of the field on the crossing route. You know, another interesting thing, Blackledge's next touchdown pass will tie the season record of 15. We're only in the fourth game of the year. Irving Fryer, Rogier back. John Huffnagel and Chuck Fusina were the guys that threw 15 in one season. Fryer will bring it out. Manka hasn't been able to kick the field goals, but he can kick off. So from the 20, Nebraska down by 14. And Miami of Florida now. Remember, Jim Kelly's out of the lineup for the year. And they are leading. Washington, that's at half, playing Oregon. Washington ranked number one in one of the polls. Wokening, Rozier, the running backs from the 20. Nebraska now has to get things going. Turner Gill gives to Rozier, big hole, 25, 30, and he is close to the first down. The block up front that time by Steinkuller and Quaffin. 52 yards now for Rozier on nine carries. That gets it out of some problems, moves it across the 30, and it is a first down. It's a first glimpse of daylight Mike Rozier's had all afternoon. He had a fine block there by Jeff Kwapik and Dean Steinkuhler. Boy, the bear was pushed today, wasn't he? And there's Florida. They've won again. They have gone through a tough schedule. First down across the 30. Rozier again, and 
living this time. His ad lib gets him almost five yards. He had nothing doing on that play. Somehow reverted outside. Joe Hines made the tackle second and five. Other scores. Notre Dame has won two in a row. Jerry Faust has the Fighting Irish rolling in North Carolina. Dick Crum must have done something to these offense in that game. This is a big win. UCLA, Stanford, John Elway, Arizona State. Second quarter, Joe Kapp won his first two games at California. Second down and five for the Huskers. Rozier again, nothing this time. A yard at most. Third down, four. It's interesting that Nebraska had really has gone nowhere with this power football. We've talked about that, the great offensive line. Penn State's defense has effectively shut down that power game. What Nebraska has to do here is let Turner, Turner Gill use those passing skills that we saw at the end of the first half. He was throwing the ball effectively. But right now, he's got to throw it again. Third and four. Split out his fire. He's back into the ball game. Gill rolling to his side. He's going to run it. He's going to pick up a first down easily. He's to the 50-yard line. That's where they respected the pass. As an end result, Gill rambles for 15 yards. Biondi made the tackle. Nice discretion here by Turner Gill. He does not force the issue. It's a sprint out. He's putting pressure on the corner right now. He's got Fryer and Ricky Simmons in the pattern, but he takes the ball down, follows his blocks, and makes a nice little gain out of it. Penn State, their defense being tested. They likewise were not sure how effective their defense would be. They're throwing that line up in the air for each point scored. That's going to be a long day, the way Penn State was moving here in the third quarter. Back to throw. Gill, short. Turner Gill trying to hit Fryer. Fryer looked like he was having some muscle spasms or cramps. He's back in. Nebraska hoping that that offense can keep moving. In this quarter now, Turner Gill is 0 for 5. Joe Paterno, interesting what he had to say at halftime. I wonder if we went over and talked to Manka. <laughs> or do you not talk to your kicker? I think you stay away from those guys. Second down, 10. Williams, Crank, two tight ends in. Turner Gill on the option. Keeps it, 40, 35, cuts to the 30, and that's the athletic ability of Turner Gill. That play looked very, very common, didn't look like much was going, and the quick feet, the ability to run, really came through. Turner Gill's going to run this option. He's going to look Walker Lee Ashley right in the eye. And he wins that duel, runs right by him. Ashley was concerned about the pitch. Gill did the right thing, kept the ball downfield for a first down. Ashley's probably talking to himself after that. You see Ashley again. Now he's he's got to worry about the pitch man. And Gill just has too much quickness and speed. He goes right by Ashley. 21-yard pickup on the play. Moves the ball. First down to the 28. Up the middle. Wilkening a flag on the play. Wilkening has the first down, but a penalty flag. That's one of the few times they've been able to run it right up the middle and have some room. Well, they set it up with a couple of outside plays previous to that and a few passes. Going to have an illegal procedure against Nebraska. So the penalty will bring it back. So Nebraska will have a first and 15 staring him in the face. Nebraska needs to score here with 7.07 left in the third quarter. Both these teams hoping to establish... On the offense, the line was not set. Hoping to establish that they are legitimate contenders for the national title. Nebraska last winning that title in 71. Joe Paterno's had two unbeaten years, but they did not get the national championship. It's been a very clean game. We've had only five penalties. Back to throw, Turner Gill. And he hits Fryer. He stayed in bounds inside the 25, and that gets some of the yardage back. They're still going to be seven yards short of the first down. There's the time left at Beaver Stadium. Beaver Stadium, named after General James Adam Beaver, former university president, also the governor of Pennsylvania. Second down, seven yards to go. And there is a beautiful view of the Nittany Valley and the home of the Nittany Lions. Gill inside, handoff to Rogier, and Rogier to the 21-yard line. That play almost didn't get underway. Gill had somebody behind him putting some pressure on. That somebody was Paffenroth, a linebacker out of Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, who was a defensive tackle a year ago. So it's third down three. 
a big down here. Nebraska needs a touchdown, not a field goal. So this third and three is a critical situation for them. Well, they'd be in four down territory if that's the case. Here we go. The crowd sensing this moment. Gill to Rogier. Rogier's got it. That's power football to the 15-yard line. Rogier, who weighs in at about 210. He's 5'11. Transfer out of Coffeyville Junior College in Kansas. First game, he had 127 yards, and last week, 149 against New Mexico State. He has 41 this quarter, 67 for the game. First down, just short of the 15-yard line. Nebraska battling back after Penn State took a 21-7 lead. Welcoming along with Rogier in the backfield. Rogier waiting for the block and didn't develop. Good reaction in particular by Al Harris out of Wyoming, Pennsylvania. Harris is one of those Villanova transfers. We had one last week that played for Boston College. And Harris, after Villanova dropped their football, came in over and he's been a welcome addition. Second down and nine. This drive, remember, starting at the 20. 11th play coming up. Ricky Simmons put to the bottom. 5.42 to go, third quarter. Turner Gill rolling. He throws to Wilkening. Wilkening to the five. He looks like he may have a first and goal. He's awfully close. He might be a yard short. Let's see. Turner Gill shows nice patience here. He's out here in the corner again. He's looking downfield. Nothing's developing down there, so he just takes his time, dumps the ball there to Doug Wilkening, who makes a nice catch just short of the first down. He is short by, what, a half yard? Anyway, another big play. Third down coming up. Here's where you like to have a guy like Dave Remington playing center for you. Remington, and not to mention Mandelko, a second team all big age selection, lined up alongside him. Let's see if they go behind E and Tice. Welcoming in the backfield, Rogier, third and one, Rogier, and he got it. First and goal. I don't know if you could stop Nebraska in that situation. There's a lot of beef up front. They control the line of scrimmage. Ashley made the stop, but it's going to be first and goal at the five-yard line, I believe. They're looking, but it's quite apparent they've got it. Now they're going to bring him in, and they're going to prove me wrong. <laughs> I thought they had it anyway. Will I ever guess again, huh? <laughs> I've been warned, Pat. I think they've got it. Yeah. Quarterbacks have better eyes, so I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait for the three. official. He's got the final vote. <laughs> you deserted me. <laughs> okay, let's see. <laughs> By the whole half length of a football. Had it all the way. Never a doubt. First and goal just outside the five. I tell you, Nebraska has really shown the ability to get up off the floor. Twice today they've been down by 14. They've come battling back. They are three of three on this drive on third down possessions, and that was just one of them. They converted them. First and goal just short of the five. Turner Gill off to Wilkening. He'll drive it to the three. Second and goal there. Wilkening, he is out of Littleton, Colorado. A very strong man at 218 pounds, a junior. He's a good blocker, and he led the state of Colorado in rushing and scoring when he was a senior in high school. So Nebraska's gotten down here in scoring territory. The last two plays, who they've gone over? Dave Remington and Mike Mendelko. This is the 14th play of this drive. I think Osborne is enjoying this. <laughs> Second and goal from the four. Fire in the wing position. He'll go in motion. Turner Gill on the option, cuts it up, and he's going to make it to the two, maybe inside the two. They had Fryer out there. Also, the other back they could have optioned to was Wilkening, Mark Robinson, who fills so well from that safety spot. That's Robinson, number 32, Silver Springs, Maryland. He's the best in the country, according to Joe Paterno. He says we've never had a better one at that position. Second half statistics. Nebraska has the edge. Nebraska's got to get on the scoreboard. That's the big statistic. Third and goal at the two. Turner Gill throwing touchdown, Rozier. So again, 
Nebraska battles back. Turner Gill got hit that time as he released the football, but he still got the ball there. That was quite a drive. Both these teams have put impressive offensive efforts together as you see some of the red from Nebraska. You go to Lincoln, which we will later this year for the Oklahoma game, and Pat, if you don't wear red, you feel like you're out of place. Seibel to attempt the point after. Hill holding the kick, and it's now 21-14. Penn State with now a seven-point lead after that 80-yard drive. Turner Gill does not see Walker Lee Ashley breathing down his throat. Just dumps the ball off there. You see Rozier wide open. They had a blitz on at 101 coverage. Rozier beats Radishek. And as an end result, seven points separating these two excellent football teams. Still 3.28 to go in the third. Tell you what made this last play work. Watch Irving Fryer, number 27 there, make a block. Now that man is supposed to be covering Mike Rozier, who you're going to see out here in the flat, who's going to catch the touchdown pass. Irving Fryer made the play, blocked that man, and Mike Rozier came wide open for the score. Excellent camera work. Our director, Bob Fishman, our producer, Rick Lasavita, on top of the scene as right now Seibel kicking off. 21-14, Penn State with the lead. That's Bow. Kevin Bow to the 15, breaks out of there to the 23. That looked like it might materialize into something very big. So Penn State was off the field offensively for six minutes and 14 seconds. You wonder, after that long 80-yard drive, what that does to you. But Blackledge, each time out, seemingly, has been able to do what he's wanted to do. And last try, they marched down in a hurry. The Nebraska defense, real Gary, has not answered the call all day long. This is critical for them right now to slow Penn State down, give their offense the ball back. Merrill in at that nose tackle. Stuckey alongside him. Toby Williams up front. Go! To Joel Cole. And Cole out to the 28-yard line. That's what they used effectively in that other drive. Just a quick pitch, try to get outside. It's been effective. Dam Kroger over to make the stop. He had a brother, Maury, who played fullback for Nebraska in the 70s. Now with 3.04, it's second down and five yards to go. Cole, Skeeter Nichols in there. Warner again might be having some problems with the legs. Skeeter Nichols, very fine football player, just the sophomore. Blackledge on second down. He gets up to Skeeter Nichols. Nichols. 30, 35, first down, 40, 45, all the way to the 50-yard line. That is depth. You bring a sophomore in for a Heisman Trophy candidate and get that kind of production. Brett Clark eventually rammed him out of bounds. Tom Osborne is concerned about his defense, and all day long the defense has not done a good job. Skeeter Nichols around the corner. Nobody's there putting any pressure on him. He gets a nice lead by Ron Heller, number 78. Skeeter Nichols around the corner for a big game. You mentioned 78. He was a tight end at the start of the year. Ron Heller, just the shuffling that Joe Paterno does so well. 22-yard run to the 50. Back to throw, Blackledge, Battaglia blocking for him. Complete to Kenny Jackson. Jackson to the 40. Boy, is he quick. Dan Kroger somehow got out there with him. Jackson, you might recall earlier, catching the touchdown pass. His first catch of the day, and now he has his second, and to the 40-yard line. Looks like they're just short of the first down. It'll be second down and less than a yard to go. Kenny Jackson again went to work in Dave Burke. You see Tommy Osborne trying to get something going with his offense. They had a very successful drive last time up. Here you see Dave Remington there in front. Del Paterno on the other side has that offense moving again. Coles, Nichols in the backfield. Lackledge on second and less than a yard. McCluskey, he's run out of room. On the far sideline, defending was Harris. Also getting over there was Chris Van Norman. And that'll bring it to third down. And you show, you see the difference in Penn State football there, Gary. That was second and about a half a yard. And what do they do? They go deep with the, with the tight end, McCluskey, down the sideline. Now, second and a half yard's a good time to do that. It's called uh, the throwaway down. Now, they have third and short here, and they can still pick up the first down. And that shows you how much they are short. Again... I wonder if Penn State through the years would have done that. That might be a new wrinkle, too, the way they've attacked this thing. They are a wide-open football team. Here is Blackledge sneaking it forward. 
Now, there is a man that would be tough to stop, I would think, in those circumstances. Blackledge is six foot four. He weighs 222 pounds. And if he gets any charge at all, he just falls forward. Blackledge did lose 10 pounds working out. But he is a big man. And a man who you can just see has complete confidence in his teammates. Give Mark Battaglia, the center there, some credit who cleared the, really the way for Todd Blackledge to make the first down. Battaglia out of Pittsburgh. First down at the 38-yard line of Nebraska. Two receivers put to the bottom of the screen. Skeeter Nichols. Nichols hemmed in and may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Nebraska reacting well. One minute, ten seconds to go. Third quarter. Steve McWhorter over. McWhorter. Let's do it! Let's go! A hard luck player last year. Sustaining that knee injury. He battled back. He lost his starting job, but now playing a lot of football in this his senior year. This drive by Penn State does a couple of things, Gary. Number one, it gives them an opportunity to score, but more importantly, it keeps Nebraska's offense, who's got a hot hand right now, off the field. Jackson to the bottom of the screen. Garrity split to the top. Second down, 10. Pressure put on. And John Williams had it. They're going to rule it a completion, I believe. And Nebraska's return has come up with a football. I don't know if he had this one. Joe Paterno is on the field on the far side. Let's look at it again. Williams is claiming he never had possession. Gary, that might have been a backward pass, otherwise known as a lateral, which would have made that ball live. Dave Ritter was over there. He put the hit on him. Let's see. So you're going to see Todd Blackledge. It's tough to tell from this angle here, but if that ball is thrown behind him, it's a live ball. It's called a backward pass, otherwise known as a lateral. That's why the bias ball is still live. That replay indicated he had a first drive. Anyway, Nebraska, big turnover at the 50-yard line. Given a new man of the ball game, Jeff Smith. Jeff Smith, who's been a sensation in the early going, a sophomore from Wichita. First time he touched the ball, he went 80 yards for a touchdown this year. Let's look again. I want to be convinced on this. You take over, Mr. Hayden, and explain this one to me on the last pass to John Williams. Well, we're going to have it here in a moment. From the 50-yard line, second down 10. We'll get to it in a moment. Randy Tice has come out of the ball game. John Sherlock has replaced him at offensive tackle. And that is going to be the end of the third quarter. The score here at Beaver Stadium. Penn State 21, Nebraska 14. We'll be back with fourth quarter action after this message and a word from your local station. Then before the name goes on. The scene is Beaver Stadium. 15 minutes to play in this game. 21-14, Penn State with the lead. Second down, 10 for Nebraska from the 50. Turner Gill intercepted. A beautiful play. Al Harris. Al Harris, the defensive end, reached up, pulled it down. That's the first interception, the third turnover against Nebraska. Now, we wanted to show you this play a while ago. Oh, wait a minute. Let's look at the interception first. You now, see great athletic ability there by Al Harris. He's just trying to tip that ball. Somehow the ball gets stuck in his hands for the interception, Gary. Now the controversy we had, we're going to go back and show you that play. It doesn't really, I guess it's academic now. Penn State got the ball back. But look at this and take over, Pat. Look at Todd Blackledge's feet now. Use the five-yard marker as your frame of reference. He throws the ball there on the five-yard line stripe to John Williams, who catches the ball in front of that stripe. Now that shows you that it is not a lateral, and he does not have possession that should not have been a fumble. But anyway, they get it back. Skeeter Nichols has a fumble, and Nebraska, I think, has it. They do at the 45-yard line. Three turnovers and four plays. The playing giveaway. But the reason we want to bring up the John Williams thing, it again shows you the, the real benefit of the replay and how you can point out different things. Now Joe Paterno trying to encourage his troops after another turnover. So Nebraska has it back, down by seven. Just short of their own 45-yard line. We just started the fourth quarter. Turner Gill to Rozier, and Rozier, he may have gotten to the line of scrimmage. The turnovers in this game. It's amazing how this game has pivoted around from time to time. But you got to give Nebraska a lot of credit. They have battled back down 14 points on two different occasions. 
From the 44-yard line, second down, 11. There's been a lot of offense in this game. Out to the far side is Simmons. He is split out along with Fryer. Rolling out is Turner Gill. It's broken up, and it's caught. It's caught on the deflection by Fryer, and that'll be a first down. Fryer, again, having trouble with the legs. Must be the cramps that have been plaguing him all afternoon long. Grabbing the toe is an indication. Let's look at this one. A, a good little good luck never hurts anybody. You see Scott Radis said, get a hand on the ball, alert play, but Irving Fryer's there to make the catch. We've had something develop on this last play as Fryer's coming out. The lights have gone out on this near side of the field. And they will continue play. The ball at the 38-yard line. It's getting dark here because it's overcast. Some rain has been forecast. First down from the 38-yard line. Up the middle. This is Wilkening to the 30, to the 25. He fumbled the ball. It's loose. And Nebraska has it. Much to the dismay of the Nittany Lions. There's Joe Paterno. He wants to sort out what's happening. The ball is just elusive right now. Both teams having a tough time hanging on. You're going to see Doug Wilkening right over Dave Remington. He breaks into the clear. Now, you're going to see his fumble coming up. Now, you must remember, you have to have possession of the football to gain control. Here you see a lot of Penn State players diving after the ball. Nobody had a control before the ball went out of bounds. Very good call. It's a split coup. Remember that. The Independence along with the Big 8. 15-yard gain on the play with the fumble included. Pass intended for Brown. That'll stop the clock with 13.44. A lot of things happening here in bunches. That stops it. Brings up second down 10. Look at the yardage in this ball game in the third quarter. And total yardage, 735 yards of total offense. That's incredible considering you've seen at least one very good defense in Penn State. Nebraska, although their defense has not been tested up to now, they were pretty good coming in. Our statistician Mike Swanson's been a busy man here today. Second down, 10. Inside the 25, up the middle. Doug Wilkening is playing now and playing very effectively. Short of the 20-yard line. It's going to come to a third down. Still seven yards to go. Lots of time left in this fourth quarter. Nebraska, you might recall, tried one field goal. They didn't even get it underway. Would they try it again? Brown split out. Friars split out. Wilkening, Rozier, the running backs behind Turner Gill. Turner Gill rolling out. Broken up. It's fourth down. It looks like Mitch Klink was the intended receiver. The number 70, Gattuso, had a hand up on the ball and batted it down. A man shaken up is Ken Kelly now for Penn State. Ken Kelly out of Stratford, New Jersey, one of the tri-captains. He was a part-time starter last year for Joe Paterno. Had a great spring. They say the biggest difference is him is he worked so hard on the weights in the spring. Timeout, Penn State by seven. Dancing in the streets of Evanston, aren't they? Northwestern ended that long scheme. There is Ken Kelly. He looks like he's going to be all right. It's field goal time for Nebraska. And this is not anything but an anxious moment for the Cornhuskers. The last time they didn't even get the kickoff. Seibel had not attempted any prior to this game. And this time he's going to try one. They're going to mark it at the 27. It'll be a 37-yard attempt. There is Seibel. Seibel's kick, and it is up. It's good. And Seibel kicking his first field goal of this season, and it's 21-17. A good hold there by Turner Gill because that snap again was low on the ground. Turner Gill had the hands and the poise to pick it up, plays it on the tee for Seibel to kick the field goal. You saw the Nebraska section, the red, the Nebraska Cornhusker, their team trailing 21-17 has been able to stop anybody in the second half. Nebraska now down 21-17. Seibel kicking off. Bow goes back for Penn State. He's going to bring it out. Out to the 15. Bow out to the 20. And he got about a yard extra. Wait, the ball is loose again, but it's been blown dead. He got a yard for his efforts. Out to the 21-yard line. Now the question 
you're leading 21-17. Do you get a little more conservative, or you just keep cranking up the passes as Penn State has done so well? Well, this is where Penn State would like to have that strong running game, believe me, where they control the ball and the clock. However, they've been so successful passing the ball, I would... I would expect to see them continue doing that here in this fourth quarter. Well, let's see what happens from the 21. By the way, Ken Kelly went off a while ago at a pulled hamstring. Warner Williams, the running backs behind Todd Blackledge. 12.56 left in this fourth quarter. This game has been up to what we expected. Off it goes to Williams. 25-27 yard line. John Williams to the 27. It'll bring up second down and almost five yards to go. The offense in this game, we expected a high-scoring game. It did not start out that way, however. And there in the second half, both teams have put it all together. Kurt Warner now comes out of the ball game. Skeeter Nichols replaces him at the tailback. Kenny Jackson, Greg Garrity split out for the Nittany Lions. This series, 5-4 in favor of Penn State. Fourth consecutive year they've met. Back to throw, Blackledge. Complete to Williams. And Williams is drowned in a hurry by Dave Burke. Dave Burke, one of the many sophomores they're playing in the secondary. He was the number four backup in spring and has come on this year to be the number two left cornerback behind Lydae. Washington struggling with Oregon. Third quarter. Arizona State, they're unbeaten. California's unbeaten. Joe Cap, surprising start. Oh, look at this. Michigan State. Remember, Miami playing without Jim Kelly. Third down, two for Penn State. And we may have a timeout, which is what we're going to have. That'll be the first timeout used by either team in the second half. 11.36 left to go in the fourth quarter. Penn State, decision time coming up. We come back, it's third and two. Third and two for Penn State at their own 29-yard line. They had the power backfield in. Now they jump Williams into the wing position. Sin, Williams in motion. Blackledge, pitch to Mumford. First down. Tony Mumford. Sophomore from Lindenwood, New Jersey. Good block thrown up front. We're going to take a look here at number 85, Wade Priner, the defensive end for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. He does his best in trying to turn the play inside, which he does, but Tony Mumford turns it inside for a big third and two play. This is the same formation they scored the touchdown earlier on in the game. They just have three backs, the power type of play, running off tackle. Williams and Skeeter Nichols, the running backs. It's the 23rd first down in this game for Penn State. Nebraska has 17. Here is John Williams. Williams to the 40, 45, another first down. He's all the way to the 50. Williams is not that big, but he was running with people on top of him. 5'10", 198. Dave Burke eventually, along with Dave Ritter, made the stop. 68 yards now for John Williams. There's Dave Remington. He wants that football back. The Huskers down 21-17, and the Outland Trophy winner wants his team to get the football without more points to catch up with. 10.45 to go in this game. Garrity, Jackson split up. Williams, Skeeter Nichols in the backfield. This is Williams and nothing. The reason Dave Ritter closed in. Ritter who started one game last year for Nebraska. Has eight brothers and four sisters and is from West Point, Nebraska. A loss of one on the play. Your attention please. That's an interesting statistic. Very nice balance, which surprises us coming into the game. We expected Penn State to be heavily a passing team. They have been up to this point. They've shown great balance, and it's really helped them on this drive where they're keeping the ball away from Nebraska. Joe Paterno has put his team together and been ready for this big game, and they've been equal to it. Excellent offense. Todd Blackley on second and 11. Pressure put on. He gets away from Dan Kroger. Broke it up. Nice play by Dave Burke. Burke over the back of Kenny Jackson. But what almost proved to be a very big mistake, Dam Kroger missed the tackle on the blitz. Watch black leg strength here. You see Dam Kroger, as you mentioned, come in. He's got a clear shot on him, but a big 6'4", 220-pound quarterback shakes him off, gets rid of the ball. Great coverage here by Dave Burke, who tries to make a play and keeps Kenny Jackson from catching the ball. 
Dave Burton from Lakeland, Utah. Two-time All-State, state's most valuable player from Utah. He's recruited as an eye back. Led the freshman in rushing, now moved the defensive back. Blackledge, by the way, has not been sacked today. He is so strong back there. Third down, 11. Jackson, he's got it. Kenny Jackson, so close to being broken up, but he made the grab. Chris Van Norman defending. 18-yard pickup on the play. Todd Blackledge put some juice on this ball. He's finessed the ball. He's thrown the ball with touch. Here he just drills it. The Kenny Jackson runs a super curl. Dave Burt covers Kenny Jackson about as well as you can, but when you have that kind of execution between the thrower and the receiver, there's not much you can do. Kenny Jackson made a touchdown grab. Very similar. We had to really concentrate on the ball. There was another instance of that. First down. Jackson having a brilliant afternoon after a slow start. Skeeter Nichols. Nichols to the 30-yard line. A pickup of two. Second down, eight, nine, 16 left in this game. Blacklitz, is, again, has done a nice job of sharing the wealth, passing it to McCloskey, and then to Jackson, and to Garrity, and to John Williams. This has allowed these the receivers of Penn State to be single cover because Nebraska doesn't know who to double uh, defend. Jackson in this game, three catches, 46 yards, one touchdown. He split out. Joel Cole, Skeeter Nichols, the running backs. Blackledge over the middle, complete to Garrity. Garrity dropped by Neil Harris. That's maybe just short of the first down. Just a very well-conceived offensive attack right now by the Nittany Lions. Well, the only redeeming thing, Gary, didn't get, get make a first down, but it's another crossing pattern, which is a good against the zone. He catches the ball in front of the deep coverage. He had his hand up and ready to receive the ball, and he did not quite get the first down that time, Gary. That's the 16th catch of the year for Garrity, his fifth of the day, and the time getting to be very important. Penn State now 435 yards in offense. Third and one. This time, they're not going to get it, I don't believe. Mike Knox filled so effectively on that play. You kick a field goal here now. Boy, I don't know. Fourth down, it's less than a yard to go. Penn State with two timeouts left. No field goal unit coming in yet. Remember, Manka has missed three. They're going to go for it. The crowd loves it. Mumford coming in. John Williams coming in. See if they go to that play where they had a third and two earlier and converted it. That was the right side when they did it the last time. Let's see if they do it again. The power backfield in there. Coles, Williams, Mumford. Now they move around. Let's see if they pitch to Williams to this side or move to this side. It's Mumford again. Same play. I think he has it. I believe he has the first down. A little tougher that time. Dan Kroger was first to get there defensively. They may have to measure. Nebraska's saying they've held. Penn State crowd thinking they had the first down. Now they're concerned, as they should be. 7-13 left in this game. Tom Osborne, he has to be waiting with hell breath. The fans up, waiting the decision. They got it. Oh, but was it close. They say it's a game of inches. Boy, was that close. So the line of scrimmage just inside the 22. Clock now put back into motion. Just outside seven minutes left in the game. 21-17, Penn State. Jackson, Garrity split out. Blackledge on first down, wanting to throw over the middle. Garrity intercepted. Picking it off was Neil Harris, and Pat, I don't think he saw the football. He turned around, and it was buried in his midsection because Garrity did not indicate the ball was on its way. That was some play. A sophomore from Kansas City, Missouri, Neil Harris. You're absolutely right. Neil Harris did not see the ball. You see Garrity pushing down the field. Now he's got to beat it. The ball's thrown over Harris's head. The ball is underthrown. Harris turns around and makes the interception. So Harris stops what could have been a very damaging touchdown. We'll be back in just a moment. Stadium. 
6.52 to go in this game. Nebraska stopped that drive that took six minutes and ten seconds in the end zone with an interception. They're now at the 20-yard line. They've got to get the touchdown to win it. Turner Gill to Wilkiny, and that's a yard. That's all. Like a brick wall, Penn State's Radisic was the man who led the charge. Let's look back at that interception by Neil Harris. Big play here. Nebraska defensive backs have been under duress all afternoon. Blackledge has been picking them apart. He underthrows this ball a little bit. Neil Harris has pretty good coverage, turns around for the interception, and they go the other way. 829 yards in total offense in this game. 21-17, second down, nine. Turner Gill on the option, tripped up. Good play that time. Coming over quickly, again, was Radisic. Radisic's playing a whale of a football game, and that's what they needed from this man from Pittsburgh. Third down still, five yards to go. Joe Paterno knew he was going to be in a battle, and that's exactly what it's ended up being. 5.58 left to go. Third down, five. Gill wanting to throw, open, Todd Brown, he's got it, that's a first down. And Nebraska still very much alive to the 37, Radisic over there again, 13-yard pickup. So Turner Gill on third and five comes through. You see both receivers, they're both running the out, out patterns, Dan Biondi gives Fryer a little bit too much room, Todd Brown, excuse me, a little bit too much room, he makes the catch for the first down, almost turns into a big play, had not been for Radisek, number 97, coming in and stopping him from behind. Brown, three catches, 60 yards, two tight ends, Williams, Crank into the ball game now for the Huskers, one, first down and 10, up the middle, inside goes Rozier, across the 40 to the 42, with five minutes and 14 seconds left to go in the game. They have time on this drive. But it may be their last opportunity. I really get the feeling that Nebraska is playing with so much more confidence now than they did in that first half. They just feel that they can do it. They've had a hot hand this second half here. Turner Gill's done a nice job. They have their power football rushing game going better than it did early on. Rozier, 74 yards on the day. Second down, five. They're picking up some good yardage on that first down, which gives them more options. Turner Gill rolling out. Up the middle, complete to Williams, the tight end. First down at the 40. Turner Gill hitting the tight end, who has been quiet today. Hasn't had that opportunity very often. An 18-yard pickup. Mark Robinson on the tackle. Jamie Williams is 6'5". You're going to see Turner Gill hit his big target. He looks outside first, comes down to Jamie Williams, who hit an open seam. Seam, the Penn State defense was more concerned with Todd Brown that time. So what Turner do Gill do? He went to the tight end, number 80, Jamie Williams. And that is his first catch of the day, Pat. 4.26 to go. First down, short of the 40-yard line. Turner Gill on first down, wanting to throw. Crink, the other tight end. And he drags the tackler inside the 30. That's Harry Hamilton. And that'll be another first down, I believe. There's the time. They stop the clock to move the chains. Turner Gill, who threw the ball very effectively, you might recall, at the end of the first half. Now doing it in the fourth quarter. Simmons, along with Shane Swanson, alongside Tom Osborne. They'll send the plays in through the wingback spot. First down, just inside the 30-yard line. Four minutes, the clock will moving at this particular time. Turner Gill to Wilkening. Wilkening for two. Second down and eight. We have a man shaken up for Penn State Harris. Al Harris grabbing his leg, and he's getting up. He's limping, but looks like he'll be all right. Simmons now comes in with the play information. Todd Brown checks out. 3.36 left in the game. You figured it would go down to the very end. Second down, nine. Turner Gill, and Gill almost picked up and then caught, no, incomplete. Almost picked up by Biondi. Number 39 almost went the other way with it. And now Gattuso's been shaken out. Here's the situation. Beaver Stadium, three minutes, 17 seconds to go in the game. Penn State is leading Nebraska 21-17, and it's a third down and nine coming up now for Nebraska. Play stop momentarily. Gattuso shake it up, number 70, for Penn State. So Nebraska with another third down. 
But they're in four down territory, a field goal of no value as they trail 21 to 17. During the break, we'll pause for this. What a game. Football right here on CBS. We had the number one ranked team, Pittsburgh, on TV to start it. Now we have the second ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers of the third down and nine inside the 30 yard line, trailing 21 to 17. Turner Gill back over the middle, caught. Oh, what a hit at the 15 yard line, put on Fryer. That was Robinson that hit Fryer, but that's another first down. I don't know how Fryer held on to it. A remarkable play by Mark Robinson. He, you're going to see Fryer. It's the same pass they scored on earlier where he ran over Robinson. Robinson's paying him back here. Fryer just delays underneath. Robinson's there to greet him, but Fryer hangs on in a critical situation. Boy, you talk about MVPs. Fryer might be one of them. He is shaken up, coming off the field. Williams, Crank, two tight ends. First down, just short of the 15-yard line. Turner Gill on the option. He pitches at the last moment to Rozier. Rozier inside the five. It's going to be first and goal, and what an athletic move that time by Turner Gill. It looked like he had no chance to get rid of the football. Nebraska can hurt you so many words. Power football, passing the football. Here you're going to see an option. Turner Gill down the line. Hamilton commits. He throws the ball, pitches the ball to Rozier. Rozier gives a little shiver there to Mark Robinson, paying him back for what he did to Fryer, and makes a big play. A big play, I guess. Intensity of college football. The pressure of college football. It's first and goal now at the three. Nebraska trying to take the lead. 2.36 left in the game. Rozier, he's going to be short. It'll be second and goal there. A mass of humanity on that play. Second down coming up. What an incredible game. I am so impressed with Turner Gill as a thrower and what Nebraska can do to you. And I'm also impressed with Penn State's defense. They've answered every call. They've been on the field a little too much here in the fourth quarter, though, Gary. That's the reason the tradition is so strong. These guys, you don't have to tell them how important this game is. Both teams coming in here, trying to take the inside track on the national championship in the early part of the season. This is the 12th play. Second and goal. Ricky Simmons put out. Give up the middle to Wilkening. He is just short. He is just short. It's third and goal. Third down goal. Now remember, a field goal is of no value. They've got to go for all of it. Time running. 144 left in this struggle. What a battle it's been here in the Nittany Valley Lion area. The clock still running with 136. Nebraska has all three timeouts left. There's the distance they've got to go to win it. And there's the clock. Third and goal. Turner Gill sneaking. And no determination. Touchdown. hinges on him. That was an 80-yard drive. 13 plays, 534. An important point after because the field goal could win it if they'd missed this one. But he got it. 24-21, a minute 18. And this crowd is stunned. They have been stunned by one of the remarkable drives of this early season. Half yard to go. All you need is just a little bit of a surge, and Turner Gill got it. Watch his offensive line come off the ball, led by Dave Remington. He gets just a little bit of a surge. Turner Gill's up and over the top. The ball just has to break the plane of the goal line. Boy, a great camera angle, but you saw Remington. That was a big block. He just gave him enough, didn't he? 24-21, Nebraska has the lead for the first time in this game. One minute, 18 seconds left to play. Seibel, who just kicked a very important point after to give him a three-point lead, 24-21. And there is the story. The time left, a big play offense, Penn State has. They still got a last gasp effort. Seibel kicking off. Bow is back deep along with Munford, and Bow is not going to bring it out. A touchback to the 20-yard line. Now, Blackledge has been able to strike 
cover ground in a hurry. He's really got to do that now. We're going to see Turner Gill here. Here's where you're happy to have a Dave Remington in front of you. Turner Gill just hops over the top. All he needed was a half yard. Got the ball. You see him reach the ball out. Stretch the ball out to cross the plane of the goal line. We had a flag on that last play. Tom Osborne wants to know. It's going to be a personal foul against Nebraska. Boy, that makes a difference. 15 yards to the 35, and does that change things? Dead ball, personal foul. Personal foul on the defense. First down. Washington struggling with the Ducks of Oregon. Michigan State still hanging on to that lead over the hurricane. Arizona State shutting out California. Arizona State's defense is brilliant. Look Austin, Austin College. College. We saw them last week. Did you say they're for real? I would say so. Doug Sooty at quarterback. Williams, Skeeter, Nichols are running backs. Warner not in there. Back to throw. Blackleach. Complete. Nichols 40, 45. First down to the midfield strike. Mike Knox made the stop at 15 yard pickup. And with a minute eight now left. Watch co captain number 56, Pete Sparrows, the offensive guard. He's going to make a key block here for Skeeter Nichols. You're going to see him come out and make a block right there, number 86. You see Skeeter just following his blocks. Back to the live action. First down for the midfield stripe. Blackledge again. Bow. He dropped it. Bow tried to make the move before he caught it. Dave Burke, who's played very well in the second half, defending on the play. That stops the clock with 57 seconds in this game. Blackledge is 19 of 33, 251 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. However, in the second half, hasn't thrown for as much yardage. He's 8 of 10 for 76 yards. Mike Swanson, what a statistician he is, and they've had some offense at one time, just moments ago, 911 yards of it. There's the time left. Second down, 10. Blackledge with protection. The catch is Kenny Washington. Kenny Jackson coming up with a catch. We had to wait. He disappeared from view. 16-yard completion. His fourth catch for 62 yards. First down at the 33, and they are coming right back, Pat. What a game we've had. What an offensive show by this Penn State team. You see the look of dismay, the concern of that Nebraska bench. Carroll now comes out of the game. First down, 33-yard line. 52 seconds left in this game. Nebraska leading by three. Blackledge a little delayed to Williams. That did not fool Nebraska at all. They may have lost a half yard. That takes some valuable time. We have a timeout now called by Penn State. They now have one timeout left. Joe Paterno has some decisions to make. 47 seconds left in this game. Blackledge will head to the sideline. What do you think is going through Minka's uh, mind right now, Gary? He's missed three field goals. It may come down to the final play where he's going to kick the ball. Well, he's missed three. You know, another question you have is do you even go for the tie? Do you go for all of it? And that's true. Wind has picked up just a little bit. It'd be blowing into the face of the field goal kicker should they elect to do that. Ball at the 34-and-a-half-yard line. <laughs> This has just been a remarkable afternoon. And Connecticut defeating Yale. Delaware, a winner. Penn defeating Lehigh. Brown over Rhode Island. Boy, Lafayette, a lot of points over Columbia. Clemson had more of a struggle than we anticipated. Duke, Duke has scored a lot of points. And Maryland, Maryland gave this Penn State team a real battle, finally losing 39-31. Maryland has a very good football team. Both teams now have identical total yardage in this game, 471 yards. Second down, 11. Boy, the crowd is quiet. Blackledge going for all of it. Harris is down there along with Garrity. They're out of the end zone. Harris, who intercepted earlier, defended well on that play. Third down, 11. 
there's our answer whether they're going to play it conservatively. We're going to see Todd Blacklich again here. He's going to go for it all to Garrity down the sideline. He lays it up. He's got good coverage here by Neil Harris. Ball is just overthrown out of the end zone. Good defense by number 11, Neil Harris. And so Joe Paterno has third and 11. Two plays possibly which to pull this out. As you look at Dave Remington trying to encourage his defensive teammates. Blackledge. Protection breaking down. He gets it off incomplete. That was Merrill who came through along with Toby Williams. Jeff Merrill put the pressure on Blackledge. It's fourth down 11. 35 seconds. You see Todd looking to the scoreboard. Joe Paterno's going to go for it here. I don't think he has a choice. They're too far out for a field goal. Be about a 52-yard attempt. Plus, Manka's missed all three. And the win that we mentioned earlier. That's just absolutely... What are the statistical possibilities of that happening? Unbelievable. Penn State's receivers have to be assured that they get 11 yards when they run the routes here. It's fourth down. Okay, this may be the game right here. Blackledge, he's got the first down catch. Kenny Jackson. Jackson has it at the 22, and they're still alive. Now remember, they have one timeout left. They're going to have to hurry up and try to kill the clock to put it in play as soon as they get the change move. Great field presence by Kenny Jackson. You can see in the top of your screen where he needs to go for the first down. He gets it by a yard, makes the catch, and secures the ball. Now they're going to have to measure, I guess. It looked like he had the first down. What it does is stop the clock. Now they have to really be aware of getting this next play off. They have only one timeout left. First down. Ready to go. They have the team up there ready to snap the ball. Tom Osborne, he must be churning inside. They will not start it until they put this in motion. Now they put the time in motion. You see it. Blackledge back. First down pass. Gonna run. He's gonna have to get out of bounds, and he does. He stops the clock with 13 seconds. Still conserving the one timeout. He had a long time back there, but nobody was open. Nice coverage there by the Nebraska secondary. Again, it been, they've been blind all afternoon. They did a job when they had to. 13 seconds left. Penn State trailing by three. I don't know. Now what would you do? You do have the range of a field goal if you don't get it on this play. You have the one timeout left to kill the clock. Although the ball's in the left hash, it's a severe angle for a soccer-style kicker. Jackson Garrity split to the bottom of the screen. Williams, Nichols, are running backs. Second down and five. McCloskey! McCloskey's got it at the two-yard line. The two. Unbelievable. That's his fourth catch, 68 yards. Blackledge had ice water in his veins. He just stood back there calmly, collectively, through the strike. They have one timeout left. They've got to be aware of nine seconds if they don't get in here. Power backfield. Three backs in. Williams now jumps in. They pitched to Mumford on two previous plays. Let's see if they do this time. Nope, they're going to play action fake. Blackledge over the middle. Did he get it? Touchdown! Kurt Bowman! to get the fans restrained. They came on to the end zone area. 
Kurt Bowman, his second touchdown catch of the day. The exact same play, power backfield, a fake to Mumford. Bowman, number 80, you see he's open earlier. The ball is thrown a little bit low. The former tackle goes down low to catch it. I tell you, that couldn't have been any closer. Look at Paterno. Oh! Bowman, two catches, two touchdowns for 16 yards. They should have moved him to tight end a long time ago. <laughs> Mankin now to point after there's John Williams. Four seconds left. What a finish to an outstanding football game. They still have the fans on the infield area over there, but they're off the playing field right now. Here's Manku, who did not have to kick another field goal. He has to be relieved. No, this one's no good. I don't believe it. He missed three field goals. Now he missed the point after. Well, with four seconds, that's probably academic. Blackledge in this game, three touchdown tosses, 295 yards. He has now set a Penn State record for touchdowns thrown in a season. 15. If it works, you go back to it. Again, you're going to see them trying to create some confusion. They fake the run. Blackledge has some nice protection. He drops back, throws the ball to Kirk Bowman, who had slipped behind the defenders for the touchdown. He just took that off the very top of the grass, didn't he? One more look. Again, you remember earlier, they've run this a number of times down by the goal line. A very, very nice catch. What I thought was interesting about that, Pat, is that previous plays, they'd always pitched to Mumford. They faked it that time, and that might have been the difference. Joe Paterno, and look at Dave Ritter. You have to see the other side. Nebraska playing here before this record crowd had played them down to the fact that they had a three-point lead with 1.18 to go, only to see an 80-yard drive with Blackledge throwing his 15th touchdown pass of the year, which ties the record by John Huffnagel and also Chuck Fusina. Right now, a five-yard penalty has been assessed against Penn State for delay of game for the fans coming on the field. You know, it's an old cliche, that, but it really is a shame somebody has to lose a game like this, isn't it? Nebraska has played so doggone well. They've come from behind. They've showed all kinds of characters. But any afternoon like this, you're going to have to have some winners and some losers. You're looking at young men who are learning some valuable lessons in life, Gary, and, and they're being taught them very quickly on the field today. Manka, who missed the point after, kicks it down to Rogier. Rogier, last play of the game. He'd have to break it all away in order to pull it out. He's trying his darndest to do it, but it won't happen. They're tearing the goalpost down. CAA on CBS. What football we've had this Saturday afternoon. Penn State 27-24. Final 27-24. Penn State winning their fourth game of the year against no setbacks. And the Chevrolet players of the game. From Penn State, Todd Blackledge, 23 of 39 for 295 yards, three touchdowns and one interception. And for Nebraska, Turner Gill, 16 of 34, 239 yards. A check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each school's general scholarship fund to further assist students in all chosen fields of academic endeavor.